Greetings everyone, welcome to THL's Alterac Valley set. I am Lotus Knight, I am one of your opponents for tonight, and I am joined by the one and only Baze Dank. Baze, how are you doing? I'm doing good, excited to be here. Right? I always love doing these set reviews. We get to have a lot of fun, get to have some of the great players here to talk about the cards. Um, I hope you're as excited as I am tonight, Baze. Yep, it's going to be a real good one. We got a ton of solid players, um, uh, and we, we did bring in one extra. So, yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah. Um, should we introduce these solid players that we have joining tonight? Yeah, let's, uh, let's get started. Awesome. So our first player here on the left side, we have the one and only Neji Boston. Neji, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you. Um, second? Okay. Now the video is moving again. Um, it is great to have you here. Uh, second, we have the one and only Nails. Nails, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great having you, as always. Uh, we have Agent PWE. Agent, how are you doing? I am good, and glad to be back awesome it's great to have you um we have darian dardar how are you i'm doing well i think this is my first ever thl content appearance i think this is a good one to choose thanks for having me on amongst such a great cast of players and also neji i'm excited to be here <laughs> oh it's great to have you i hope you're bringing some really hot card takes tonight for your first show Oh, absolutely. I have to start off on a hot note. And our final duo tonight, representing one player, we have German Always Justin Time Shep. Um, how are you two doing? Uh, we're actually one person, so yeah. I just wanted to clarify the bat. Yeah. But... Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. One, I... two, three. I, I am, am doing, doing well. <laughs> Awesome. So just a quick explanation of how this worked. We are going to start by going over some cards. So we're going to go over three categories of cards. We're going to talk about what we call our Dardar cards, which are strong cards that impact the meta. Then we're going to go over Aeon cards, which are cards that are um, overrated. And finally, we're going to talk about what everyone sees as Tonk cards, which are cards we believe are underrated. Um, I... After that, we're going to have a few rounds of questions. All players have given some spicy answers and chosen some really fun cards. So I'm excited to see the debate. Um, I hope you're all really excited to talk to us about it. Chat, message your answers, disagree with us. We will debate you and you will prove us wrong. So we're here for that. Or not me wrong. No one's going to see my picks this time. But to begin, um. I am going to hop us into the first card. Justin and Shep, are you ready? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the first card we have here, oh. what is it? <laughs> is it Iron Deep Trog? <laughs> so tell us a little bit about why is Iron Deep Trog in the list here as a strong Dardar card? I feel like most people have heard this already because reveal season's gone on long enough that, that people have seen people say it's good and yeah we're 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 in agreement you, you buff this and uh, some decks are very sad and can't kill it <laughs> like yeah quest on one decks if you go first this, this is scary uh, or yeah if you ever buff it and they can't kill it immediately uh, just even any other board based deck that can't play like their adorable infestation or something that's pretty pretty sad. Locking and out playing spells. Yeah, I would agree. It's like they play three spells and it's a full void, right? Yeah, doubling's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just giggling. And as a token druid stand, I approve. <laughs> <laughs> it's gibberling for your opponent. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm happy to give my opponent gibberling in the name of gibberling. Easy. Uh, 
Uh, Baze, do you want to handle this one? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm also super excited to play this card. Uh, I'm uh, a, a firm believer that this is going to be like a just an archetype of its own. We're going to see it in uh, several classes, and uh, uh, I'm I'm just this is one of the cards I'm most excited to play with. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, let's uh, start over to Neji. Neji's got an opinion or two on this card. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty good, but uh, I think Divine Shield is a synergy that is really good, right? Uh, there's Guardian Og Merchant, which is in a lot of token-based decks. And also, if you're playing Paladin, you have stuff like Noble Mount, which, I mean, I don't even know how you clear this with Noble Mount on it. Like, they're definitely getting a copy, so... I think Divine Shield is really, really good with this. You just have to like develop into it, and then they can buff it more. It's it's really rough to deal with. Like its interaction with the coin is so good. Yeah, uh, close. Maybe let's hop into a next card. Awesome. So our next card we have here. Let me just make sure I have the right one. Yep. So Agent PW, why don't you tell us about your first card? Um, I think you might be on mute. Hello. He's actually not muted. Uh. Hello. Am I audible? Okay, now it's fine. Um, go ahead. Okay. Uh, first Dardar card is Siphon Mana, the new two mana mage spell, with uh, deal two damage to anywhere. Honorable kill reduce the cost of spells in your hand by one. So I see this as uh, flow, but you can put two more flows in your deck, and then like if you whiff on the flow, you just flow your own hand and. That's like almost better in some cases. Uh, I mean, you're not playing a mage deck with minions anyways, so you just like throw this in every mage deck, and then it's kind of nutty. And then, especially, I, I'm a believer in the Mazaki mage, who's already like maybe playable, but now this is the card that I actually needed to to maybe be competitive. Yep, that's my take. Yeah, it looks like a good card. Uh, do we got anyone else who got something to say? Obviously, it's like I, I'm on board. I think that uh, everything PW said covers it all. Uh, we got uh, always Justin Shep German time that uh, does have something to say. <laughs> That's close enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I would like to point out that this card is only good because you can reduce your ice foot tower. And then you can move with Ice Foot Tower. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the. That's the. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. I yeah. think it's the only way to reduce Ice Blood Tower is to by one man in the set. So that's how uh. that it's going to see a lot. Of <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then you can uh -huh. um, like pull the other Siphon Man out of your deck to reduce the spells on your hand by one more with your Ice Blood Tower that you played. It's crazy. Yeah, it should be, it should be great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm... I mean, I'm, I'm up for it. I don't know why, but that that's that sounds good. <laughs> I think this is just such a cra a potentially crazy card. Like it's Octo sometimes, and that's just scary. Yeah, I'm a bit concerned with this card. Like, maybe it's so insane that they had to give Mage a really, really bad rest of the set just because this card is so cracked. Like, this is the best card in the set, by the way. Ooh, that's hot. All right. right. Um, I will keep us moving because we will talk more about Mage, and there's still some Mage cards to get to, but. I want to go into our first Neji card. Neji, do you want to go ahead? Uh, yeah. Uh, the first card we have is Sleet Breaker. Um, very strong card. It's an elemental, so it can go in elemental decks. Uh, it adds a card to your hand, which is good. And the card you get is Wind Chill, which is also good because it cycles a card. So 
you're getting like plus two cards with this, which is pretty nice. Uh, gets reduced by uh, Forgeborn too. I think this is just going to be a staple shaman card um, from here until it rotates, honestly. And wind chill is also really good in my opinion. Just being able to freeze a minion and then cycle. Uh, Shaman's always looking for card draw. And uh, the frost energies are also really good with Baron Glacier. Um, just to get more three fours in the elemental deck. Uh, yeah, I, sounds good. PW's got uh, an opinion now. Is it the same? What? What's going on? Uh, yeah, this card is a lot better than some of the cards you already run, like uh, Menacing Nimbus, the two minute two two that adds an element to your hand. That card sucks, but you still kind of play it sometimes, which is really sad. And now you can put like an actually good elemental in your deck. And then the card it gives you doesn't suck, so uh, it seems pretty good. Yeah, just generally good. Uh, nails, or not nails, but Lotus, who do we got next? Okay, so for our next um, card, we have the first Dar 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 card. Um, go ahead. <laughs> All right, so do you know what they say about people with big sigils? Big win rates. This card's turbo bust, though. Sigil of Reckoning, it just does a lot. It does a lot in a lot of different ways. This pu this pulls eight eights. This pulls this pulls other eight eights, depending on what type of deck you are. So either the eight eight that goes face or the eight eight that that torments spell decks. There's just a lot of stuff going on. It's a turn earlier than Proving Grounds. It's more flexible to work with than Proving Grounds. Turbo bust, though. Easy pick here to go first. Also, I filled this in last and had about eight cards less to work with, but don't worry about that. Cards to nuts. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not a believer, but I will see. It looks fun. I'll play it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, anyone else uh, got got opinions about Sigil of the Big Sigil? Huge Sigil. Uh, yeah, uh, we're sending that thing back over to always German time chef, Justin. Yeah, we were like talking, and I don't think it like Big Demon Hunter is good at all, or that it will be good, but I can see this in Death Battle Demon Hunter being good if you run uh, 8 mana, both the 8 mana 8 eights, like the one that makes spells cost more. And big Sigil, big, big Taint. Yeah, that stuff. Yeah. I, I want to people's perception of, of Death Row Demon Hunter, but I... <laughs> yeah, it, it, it seems cool. If you run the Ozreal Giant as well, you might want to run this too. Uh... Big Demon Hunter never works, right? <laughs> <laughs> it just don't never know. works. Lol. <laughs> no shot, Big DH works. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, There's a shot, and it's like carry like. If Taint is really good against decks in the meta, but I don't think that's going to be true. It's going to be a BGH meta to remove the oppressive force that is Sigil of Rectioning. That's uh, true. That makes sense, actually. No, you're going to play a Gangster that has uh, uh, like <laughs> plus four attack on it. So just kill the, the Taint as it comes out. Hmm. It might be a Gangster meta, and this plays around Gangster. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm terrified of gangster. Uh, anyways, uh, Lotus, what we got? What we got next? Okay, for our next card, Agent PW is bringing us a Paladin card. Yes. All right. I assume people can hear me. Uh, yep. I'm going to keep talking. Last time I picked. Uh, what what is it called? You, you think I know what it's called because it's a good card. Uh, Noble Bannerman. Last time, yeah, that was three a pretty good one. Card. That was pretty good. So I'm gonna go again. Stick with the theme. Three mana Paladin minion. Except this time, Stonehearth Vindicator is a three one that draws a spell from your deck that costs like three or less, I think, and makes it cost zero. Mm -hmm. And uh, draw in Paladin is good. Paladin spells that cost three or less. Assuming you don't put like secrets in your deck are good, and so you just like play this and put a Libra, pull your Libra out, a Wisdom out, 
or your hand of a doll to draw two, and it's like a five the five two. It's pretty good. I mean, I think you just put this in every paladin deck, and for the next uh, year it's in. Seems good. So, who wants to hop in to answer about the Stone Hearth Vindicator? Um, should I wait for a pause? Like, yeah, no, uh, what you do is you, you play your Trog, and then you coin your Vindicator, and you slam the Noble Mount on the Trog, and it's just like another way to get your Noble Mount consistency on the Trog on time, and it's just, uh, it's, it wins the game on turn two, going second. Kind of good. Uh, like, I mean, Paladin draw has just never been this efficient as as the last two three mana draw cards. Like, I'm I'm stoked to play this card. They still don't they draw more than one at a time, which is like kind of but, <laughs> yeah. But uh, at least um, we get like good single draws now. I don't know. I still miss Solid's Pride. Like, yeah. R.I.P. The last Paladin deck that I really liked. I mean, it was like there was Crack Paladin and Endurance, but I didn't like that as much. But yeah, um, it's definitely a good card. Yeah. What we got next, Lotus? Okay, so for our next card, um, Justin and Shep are bringing in their second card, and it's quite a steal. Okay. So, strong card doesn't mean it's going to get played, right? No, I mean, I mean, all strong cards get played, just like this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, in that case... Uh... In that case, Shep will read the card for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, we're getting called out like this, wow. <laughs> but, okay. I've wanted a test rogue back for a very long time, and like it's kind of like the closest we're going to have to a test rogue in a while. But it's still gonna be like unplayable, but you know, this card might make it work. It's simple. You play Maestra, and then you play Secret Passage, and then you realize that doesn't work, and then you concede, and then you queue up a next game, and then you play Maestra, and then you don't play any cards for five turns, and then you you you, you play some cards. It's great. This is a strong I'm card. I'm so inspired to run the stack now. <laughs> this is a strong card. <laughs> I'm so on board with the Why this is a strong card. <laughs> you have sold it. Uh, PD, well, you, you, got, you got opinions. Yeah, so uh, this card doesn't go in Garrett Rogue because it's a 5 mana 4 5 minion that does nothing, and so it's trash. One star. You're telling me that you're not putting Maestra? Yeah. Yeah. Not the at best all. part about uh, Thief Rogue is that you can steal your opponent's Garrets because they're running <laughs> Garret Rogue, and then you, you mm. can be the Garret Rogue. Yeah, I would agree with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we got this, we got Master, we got Lobotomizer uh, yeah. for the for the mirror. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Perfect. I, I figured out the argument. Okay, okay. Neji disagreed with this, which means that Neji thinks this is a weak card, which means that it's a strong card. Okay. This is the strongest argument you've made so far. <laughs> Do you like this card or not? Like, why is it on your list? I don't understand. <laughs> All right. Let us, yeah, let's take a... It's a strong card. Don't think too much of that. <laughs> okay. It's um, a rogue card, so it's probably broken. Like, yeah. Fair. <laughs> so, uh, take... <laughs> yeah, yeah. If it said pirate and warrior card on it, it'd be good. <laughs> um, Nails, do you want to give us our final rogue card of the night? Yeah. So, following my, up my point that rogue cards are strong and bringing you another strong rogue card, we've got uh, scabs. This card is cracked. So uh, it's honestly just got like one to two extra lines of text on it that it doesn't need. Uh, like, bro <laughs> struggles with board clears. It just is a vanish. Then it gives you two four two stealths for no reason after already, like, yeeting their guys off the board and shadow stepping your Octobot that you used to discount this a second <laughs> time and play it for five mana. Like, uh, 
then it continues to let you cheat mana with the hero power every turn. Yeah. Um, the the card is just insane, and the like. I've made this point a lot, but the entire uh, rogue team or uh, dev mains uh, at Team Five, like they they really just print broken rogue cards uh, really consistently without any re regard for the rest of the classes. Scabs is turbo nuts. Um, Best card so, in the So like we use the um the heart the coin concede uh rating list to to come up with what's uh over and underrated and this is like the only card I think I've seen rated over a five, which means they think it's gonna be nerfed on average. Uh <laughs> this is kinda nutty. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh who who wanna who wants to take it away? Anyone anyone disagree? It doesn't get nerfed, no way. It's okay. not that good. No, it's a rogue card, so it's not getting nerfed, but it yeah, should be. Not. That's the problem. That's a good. That's a good point. If it's broken in a rogue card, then you don't nerf it. It's the just solution. Make them like three twos. I don't know. Like what is? Okay. Yeah, Anyways, it's a mana cost, and that'll actually impact it. But like, yeah, that's yeah. That's about the only thing you can hit on that card. Yeah. You Make them hit three ones. Like zero power. Like I don't know. The problem is you play against Lifesteal Demon Hunter, and then you play this, and they don't have any minions on the board except for their quest reward, and then they just play it again, and then it, actually they don't do that because they just draw their entire deck and you lose, but, you know. It doesn't beat Demon Hunter, but okay. I'm not trying to do that with Gerard. So it's, it's okay. Mozaki Mage beats Demon Hunter, I think, right? Not a, you get Glow. Probably you get not. Oh, you get, you get oh, that's right. Um, yeah. Liz, so what we got next? Okay, so next we have... A uh, question for everyone. Before we continue, I want to ask you all, what is going to be the state of Rogue? Rogue right now has a pretty good position in the meta, being kind of like arguably one of the top three classes with arguably the best deck, according to Always Just In Time. So I'm going to ask Nails here. Nails, how do you think Rogue is going to fare in Alterac Valley? Um, I think that Rogue is still going to be like one of the best couple uh, classes. Uh, another point about this card that I forgot to mention is it, uh, about scabs is it's absolutely cracked in Smite Rogue, like the weapon rogue that tries to OTK with Smite. Like they play a bunch of taunts and then you say, no, you actually didn't play all your taunts, by the way. Here's my eight damage that helps me get there and also it stalls for a turn. And like it's third Cloak of Shadows against a board deck. Um, if your Octobot had to be spent early game or something i don't know like it just gives you more mana cheats so you can get the combo off easier like that's true yeah no rogue should be very strong um, should be pretty good in quest room too i guess just because it's a cracked card a uh, base what do you think of rogue for the next uh -huh. set I mean, like, this, you know, I think that the printing of the hero card makes every rogue deck better. Uh, I still think that uh, we could probably do better things than the weapon uh, smite deck. Um, I think in, like, quest rogue specifically, like, this into the battle master is uh, pretty gross because you can just, like, generate 16 damage with two cards um, that way. Um, but, yeah, this, this goes in everything. Uh, yeah, I'd, like, any deck that's playing weapons, this is sick because you can then bounce a bunch of taunts and just hit him in the face. Especially, if, you know, you, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. This card's gross. Uh, the, the, they're making and that rogue's just gonna be good as always. Anyone else want to give their opinion about the general state of rogue? The expansion hits. All right, um, I will keep us moving to our second Dar 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 card. Um, go ahead. All right, so basically, Thing from Below got put into the game with Beast. Um, Frosty for Matriarch gets discounted by way too many Druid cards, it turns out. Like, every time I look at the card, I find more beasts that randomly work with it. And that includes 
cards that were like pre-expansion as well as just things that work with it already and it does all the mana cheating all the all the duplication with oracle balloon things that you want it to do it feels like maybe it opens up or opportunities for beast related archetypes maybe but it also feels like it just fits in pretty cleanly in decks that just play druid cards to be quite honest um i don't know how ridiculous it is to think of the lines that exist with glow flies and then playing these afterwards but i don't know jammer yeah. can figure that one out um that, that one's not for me to figure out it just feels like a, like a like a 28 28 cards plus two matriarchs type of angle potentially not not actually i mean alignment druid exists but like in general it just feels like a like a strong strong card that works its way into a lot of different places uh, i mean i thought you were joking but then i realized best in shell also discounts this like what everything does um and uh shep time got an idea as well uh i'd really appreciate if you use my full name in the future just so i can be sure to know who you're talking about because <laughs> sure, right we, we weren't sure yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But... uh anyways so when i look at this card i see a mana cheating yeti and then i'm like where have i seen a mana cheating yeti before yeah and would you believe it it was <laughs> our previous strong card the wild panel which is just better because it has rush so i mean i mean darian made a strong case this will probably see play this might this might even be the second best man cheating card right set, but, uh, yeah but i would want to point that out yeah just just a reminder of the overall thesis uh, yeah i mean one duplicates but one has rush so yeah I rush, mean, rush, and we all know rush is rush is just <laughs> good so yeah right. no, I, I can see yeah, the it's deep broke. you'll steal the oracle of a loon from druid anyway so they both like literally yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that totally. I don't know how, but that we'll figure that out. Oh, of course, lobotomizer. <laughs> That's the line. What well, final works with that three two right? in Rogue? That changes your class. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't work with the cards at the start of the game, but if you draw a Rogue card, then it works. Yeah. Free single discount for playing a, a Raptor Pog. Uh, anyone else got anything, or are we we're moving on? That sounds like we're moving on, Lotus. Okay, so we now have our second Neji Boston Dardar card. Neji, go ahead. Yeah, we got Dreadlich Tamsin. Um, I wasn't completely sold that this was the nuts at first, but I've seen the light, and I think it's one of the best cards in the set. Um, deal three to the board pretty good shuffle the whatever they're called uh rifts into your deck not bad draw three cards which is like a backfire okay that's really good and then also the whole game you can get three threes from your hero power plus five armor which is also nothing to sleep on um i think this slots into hand lock i don't think the downside of like losing the damage in hero power is that bad in a lot of matchups so yeah, I think this is just really nutty. Yeah, uh, seems good. Darren, do you, uh, do you disagree? Um, I, I think that uh, Neji already managed to respond to it, which is a little unfortunate, but I am a savvy Twitter user without a Twitter account, and I know that a smart person called Ranlet said that this is anti-synergy with the quest, and I can never finish the quest afterwards. That seems really bad. What do we do about that, Neji? We fatigue ourselves. Absolutely. Genius. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for explaining that. This card is a four, a five out of four, even. Thank you. Good uh, talk. Instead of dealing damage to yourself, you summon three threes. Gosh darn it, my deck sucks now. <laughs> yeah. What are we supposed to do? I can't finish my quest now, but I'm doing everything I else. I have too many three threes. <laughs> Free uh, backfire is so bad. Yeah. I, I do have a free tip for you that, that non-Twitter user, if you do have a Twitter, you can actually like uh, mute people um, that say dumb things. Like, oh, um, no, I, I don't have person. a person. Oh, then you missed the content. 
You do miss the content. Yeah, I know. It's been painful. All right, we can go on to the, the last starter card. Okay, Nails is bringing us the last strong card that should impact the meta. Go ahead, Nails. Yeah, so we've got um, Carriel Hero card. Um, I kind of just picked this up because no one else had picked it yet, and this has to be represented. Um, it's like it's just a ball of stats. Like the the defensive uh, aspect of the hammer is really good, or the the immovable object or whatever. It's more of a shield than a hammer, but whatever. Um, like it forces. OTK decks to run Viper and spend their time spend some time playing it. So like you, you run a Viper and Garrett now because of this card's existence. Um like uh and the hand buff aspect of it is like pretty cool. Two mana hand buff for plus four plus four is pretty strong. It's it's like not quite on par with conditioning or anything, but um, just as a hero power that you can spam for some like game value, you can make some pretty good stuff happen with it. I don't think it's incredible or anything. It's just mostly for the weapon. Um, you get 10 armor from playing the card against a non-viper deck because the armor counts for double. Um, or I guess uh, since the damage rounds up, it's like eight armor, but it's still going to be like it's a lot of damage reduction that you just get for the rest of the game. Um, very good card. Uh, it makes Paladin actually a defensive class and not a class that hopes to draw its Alter Truth Seeker and the Libram of Hope on time against Hagra. Because uh, right now it like gets bullied by Face Hunter and uh, Cariel's a hell of a stabilization. Still might get bullied by Face Hunter early game, but whatever. Mm hmm. All right, I'm going to give it a shot. All right. Always German just in time ship. What's up? Viper, Viper lol. lol. Yeah, no, like, I, I, I don't disagree, but it's, um, it, like, it forces aggressive decks to run Viper or kill you before turn seven, which, to be fair, they do. Like, I don't think this solves all Paladin's issues. I think it is... A very strong card in a vacuum and uh just contributes to like defensive game plans very little yeah i'll add i think um in tournament play if paladin is good it's because of this and also combo decks are all going to start having to run Viper if you want to beat this, which is kind of insane. I don't know if that's actually going to warp on like a ladder too much. I don't know how good Paladin will be, but I mean, if Paladin's really good, then Dex's probably going to start running Viper if Paladin's really, really popular, which yeah, this card is just completely insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good wrap to the Dardar. Lots of strong cards. And let's talk about some more kind of strong cards. Well, unexpectedly, or no, uh, I guess I would say the opposite. Yeah. Strong cards. So let's talk about some bad cards. Yeah, um, <sighs> we can look into the cards that, you know, they seem good, but I think the people here are going to bring strong opinions to show that they're really not that good. So we're going to talk about our Aeon cards, which we believe are overrated by the THL community. And to open our Aeon cards, we are going to start with Nails. Nails, what is your first Aeon card? My overrated uh, card, it, my Neti Boston card, is a card that he himself, it's related to a card that he picked. I'm going with Wind Chill. I think that the card is, um, I, I think that Sleep Breaker is still a really good card because it generates a Wind Chill, but I don't think Wind Chill itself is a card that you're going to want to want to run in too many decks. I think he's still playing Quest Shaman, but, um, like, I'm, and Fro Frost Shaman, I guess. Uh, but it's just uh, a 
basically a brick against OTK decks um, that aren't trying to develop big stuff. Like it's obviously the nuts into uh, like big DH or uh, Libra and Paladin. It's pretty good into face hunter uh, if they get a really big noble mod. But like it's uh, one mana get a new card in your deck instead of zero mana have a better card in your deck. Like um, the and um, in a board based meta this card is really good. I just don't think we're currently in a board based meta, so I'm pretty skeptical on running wind chill on a lot of shaman decks. A uh, pretty good card, but definitely overrated by people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's hard for cantrips to be bad, but like you know, it quest mage had the issue of not being able to hit things, so like this has that same issue of like not being able to activate your frost card to just get your draw, but. Um, yeah, any anyone? Oh, PWE does have an opinion. Uh, you can totem and play this on your own totem. Then you can you can draw a card. You so can draw a card don't, for three minutes. Don't have to worry about it. Yeah, that's insane, right? And you get a frozen totem. Yeah, I'm like mage. Or you could draw a card in your deck for zero mana. Right, right, exactly. No, this card. And you could like not duplicate the trog while you're doing this. You just need to remember that Frost Shaman is OP, and so this card's OP. I haven't thought about it like that, Dewey. It's an interesting point. Yep, that's it. Um, I would add one thing, though. I'll make a counterpoint here. I think Multicaster is one of the strongest cards from last set, and this card is really good for Multicaster. So... I yeah, I strongly agree. Like I that. said, you run it in Quest Shaman. I'm not sure it's making the... Do you run in Quest Shaman and Frost Shaman? I don't think it makes the cut in anything else. And yeah. Like, yeah, cycling is really important in Quest Shaman. Get, getting an easy Frost Rock is good. Like, I'm not going to dispute that. Um, I, I don't think it's insane. I think it's just... You run it in your deck for multicaster synergy, and it's, like, mm -hmm. fine. Any Sleep Breaker is still good. But yeah. Okay. Any final thoughts on this card before I, I hop us into our second Aeon card? So, Dardar, tell us about our second Aeon card here. All right. Yeah. So, my first, uh, my first Neji boss card, as I'm going to choose to refer to this as, is uh, Frostbite, I believe. So we're we're sticking with we're sticking with shaman theme here. Uh, Frostbite is cool. It's pretty unique effect. It does some interesting stuff, but I think it just struggles to find a good niche um, because other things also deal three and kind of fit better, aka lightning bolt, perpetual flame serpent, shrine portal, depending on what you're trying to do. I think this obviously is like a like a snap pick into frost shaman. But if you're PWE who says Frost Shaman is not the nuts, by the way, then this probably shouldn't be a card that's rated in the top 10 out of the 135 cards in the set. Um, and I think unlike Windchill, I think this even has like a more difficult time going into going into the Quest Shaman. But I could be wrong. I think it's specifically the idea with like wanting to sometimes draw two still from the three mana two three card that's good. And shaman is not a nature spell, so it doesn't do that. But I guess if it goes to like a, if it goes like a multicaster angle, and then cuts that part of it, then this might be good in the sense that like its its effect is uniquely good. Like making aim shot cost five, making brawl cost seven, rank rank or six, like etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, right? It, it, permanence is good, and two mana permanence is good, but I don't think it all adds up exactly well. Yeah, like solid card, but yeah, top ten is a tall order for this card. Like it's a fine card, it's interesting, but like I don't know. I definitely think after rotation we'll see it a ton and it'll be uh, pretty solid. But like before then, I don't know. And being a top ten, you'd expect all of those cards to immediately be cracked and affecting the meta. Anyone else uh, got something? We got PWE. Each counter we've been waiting for. They can't what? play their ice blood tower because 
top 12. Uh, yeah. <laughs> GG. <laughs> oh, I didn't consider this. Okay, Big, maybe it is a top 10 card. Big Mage in mm -hmm. shambles. Yeah, I mean, I mean, because we all agree here, right? That like the best four cards in the set are like the the ten mana, the nine mana, the eight mana, and the seven mana spells in mage or something well, like right. that. Yeah, and then the fifth best card is the one that draws all four. Like, all four of them. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the the sixth is uh, the hero card that replays them all. Right. No, so then actually, the seventh, they don't really have spells. The seventh one has to be replay them, one, but... because it counts. Oh yeah, that's, that's true. So then this counters all of that, so it has to be like close to it. I guess that uh, yeah. then I then I'm starting to see it. Okay. Uh, Otherwise, kind of sus. Not really feeling frostbite. Let's, uh, let's keep it rolling. Where are we going next, Lotus? Okay, so Justin Sheptime have a hot mage card that everyone seems to be thinking is really good. I'd like to clarify, it's actually a cold one. Uh, <laughs> you know, the card's name is Shivering Sorceress. And it's a minion and mage that's ranked 7 out of 135. It's a, it's a really good minion, but I don't think this is enough for me to stop playing Flow, Spring Water, and uh, Siphon Mana in all of my mage decks, uh, and, then, and then completing 24 more spells. Uh, like, I'm happy if I play this one one, like, not that happy, and I'm not really happy if I play it any other time in the game. Uh, so I don't think I want it in my deck. If I'm running 28 other spells, I don't think I want to give it a 7 out of 135 when I don't want to put it in any mage deck that I want to play. <laughs> uh, if it, if it single-handedly carries big spell mage to, to being relevant and playable, uh, then, then I guess then it probably deserves that raising, but I, I don't think it's single-handedly carrying big spell mage. Even if big spell mage becomes a thing, that'd probably be more down to like Clumsy Courier or Rune of the Arc Mage. Uh, and not this card that discounts your highest cost spell, but then gets cast for free anyway off Clumsy Courier. <laughs> mm -hmm. Shep, you, you all agreed with all that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But I would like to point out that because it does discount Ice Spot okay, Tower, true, sorry. Ice Spot Tower is like the best card in the set. Instead of a 7, it's probably just like an 8. you right, uh, just for that reason. Yeah, yeah. Like if Ice Spot Tower didn't exist, it'd probably be like a 135, I'd yeah, say. Yeah. But yeah. Somewhere in there. Uh, yep, it's uh, Iceville Tower OP OP changing the meta. Dar uh, Darter, what you what you got for us? Right, so I am probably one of between five and ten people, I'd say, in the world of Hearthstone that is uniquely qualified to discuss this because I fit the intersection of the Venn diagram between. APX void Twitter followers <laughs> slash viewers and ping mage enthusiast. Uh, as um, so, as a ping mage enthusiast, by that meaning, I played ping mage yesterday for one game and won the one games, one hundred percent win. Uh, I noticed that this card would be a direct improvement to a bad card I put in my deck. So I thought, oh, this is a good card. And then to follow it up, as someone who noticed that APX void rated this before, I thought, oh, this must be a good card. So clearly, this card is not overrated. I think you guys made a good point at the end there that this card's probably like 8 out of 135 instead of 7 out of 135. I think that's probably where it slots in. Valid. Nails. <laughs> um, yeah, like, I think it, it's a really good card in a vacuum. And, like, if there is a time in the future where we're going to start playing Yes Minions Mage instead of No Minions Mage, it's like one of the reasons we actually want to play that deck instead of a different class. I don't uh, think we're quite to the Yes Minions Mage point, though. We we do lose uh, Springwater and Flow at the rotation, and this we card will be... Water, we we lose, do. Uh, flow and, like, also Font and Effects Blast are the only other Spell Mage cards that exist, uh, but we don't play those anyways. No. But we yeah, lose flow. Flow. We, we lose Flow, so the deck probably dies. Yeah. Uh, we do keep. Uh, oh well, I mean, we do lose spring water because we don't have flow anymore. But like, you know, that's true. Yeah, so, <laughs> not, it might not be true. Like, if we're still yeah. playing a spell done stock, then we still might want to play spring water. But maybe it needs to go back to four or something. Like, yeah, I don't know. But that's four months from now. We've got time <laughs> to figure that out then. 
Yeah, but yeah, this card, if we ever do play minions, is nutty, but like, why would we do that to ourselves when we could not? We would get flow, which cheats mana, and then we'll cheat a little bit less mana, or sorry, a lot less mana, uh, once we can't cheat a lot more mana. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, what, what, let's, uh, let's not talk about mage anymore, it makes me sad. No, um, let's talk about the only legendary spell in the set. Neji, go ahead. Uh, yeah, we got Tamsin's Phylactery. Uh, I see a lot of people saying this card is one of the best cards in the set. It's just insane. And I really, I'm not seeing it. I've seen ideas where you run Humongous Owl and Wicked Shipment in some, like, draw Warlock deck and then try and blow them up with Owls after you clear your board. And it sounds like you die to Ilganoth and a lot of other things really fast. And it's not going to work. Um, w the spot I could maybe see it in is like a zoo deck. I've seen some lists th and theory graphs um, where you have like eggs or Korak um, and stuff like that. And you can give the death rattle to a few of your minions. Um, but I don't know if zoo's actually going to be that good either. So yeah, I think this card's very, very overrated. I don't think it's very good. This card needs Plague of Flames, like, really bad uh, to make the owl thing work. Like, they can just have a board and they take a bunch of rag shots, but then, like, they don't lose the game. And so you lose the game because this is the entire thing you set your deck up to do. Yeah, right now, there's no great board clear that destroys your own board. There's no Reign of Fire that could really synergize with this. Yeah. Like, you need three mana. It's like you School give... Spirits. Yeah. School Spirits on the Wicked Shipment, but still, this deck's and mega the wicked slow. Shipment, the Wicked Shipments themselves require a ton of setup. Like, um, and, like, if you're under the effect of Frostbite, then you still can't really get the combo off. Like, mm -hmm. there's just big issues. Yeah. Um, anyone else has any opinion on Tamsin's phylactery? Okay. So, Agent PW is bringing us our next card. Go for it. Alright, my first overrated card is Captain Galvangar, the new warrior legendary. That's basically Grom... But for six mana, Grom, the card that you play a lot in your warrior deck. Um, but you need to gain 15 armor. And then he gets 9-9 nine, nine with charge. So you can draw your entire deck playing Control Warrior. And then do some combo that does like 36 damage with like Battle Master and Faceless. And then like if your opponent's above 36, you don't kill them. If they're Cariel, you don't kill them. If they're aggro, you don't care about this card because you're just control warrior, you win anyways. Um, if you're not control warrior, this is a six mana, six, six. Uh, playing this card is trolling. And if you're playing it, you're trolling. That's my thoughts. Uh, I wish that this existed when uh, we had uh, the Bloodstorm Mercenary. Sweet, but Neji, Neji, what you got? Yeah, I was just gonna say this is such a weird card because you want to play this in an aggressive deck, which doesn't want to gain armor. But this card wants you to gain armor, but you don't want to play in a deck that gains armor. So it just doesn't really fit in anything. I mean, if we had Skipper Smith from last year, obviously this would be ridiculous, but we don't. So unless you're planning on playing some heavy plates or something, I don't know. It's just not very good. Maybe after everything gets nerfed, Control Warrior can finish games with this, but that's uh, we'll worry about that in uh, three months or whatever. Mm -hmm. where, where are we going next? Okay, so next we have Dardar's um, first Aeon card. Take it away. This is number two, right? Yeah, second. Yeah, so, okay, so my... My second Neji Boston card is uh, a Claw Fury Adept. And 
at this current moment, I'm trying to remember why I made this, uh, put this in the list here. Um, I may or may not have filled this out at roughly 1.30 a.m. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I think what I didn't like about it was the fact that it required having a board uh, to some extent. I think it does some potentially cool things if you're um, if you're in spots of board tension, but those might not exist. But let's just pretend that they do. You can get some favorable trades, two threes trading into other two threes with this. Like that's pretty interesting. Obviously, it's a beast, so it discounts stuff. There's there's a lot of um, there's a lot of like potential ways where it feels like it could be fine. I, I think just in the back of my head, the reason why I put it here is because I wanted things that were like super highly rated and this was ranked 12. And in reality, it feels more like a three out of four type of card. Uh, I think it's, yeah, I think it's just fine, but not like spectacularly great. Fair. Um, based, what are your thoughts on this card? Uh, like it's a lot like frostbite where it's just like fine um i, I think it's very overhyped uh it's gonna see play in exactly uh the top druid and then once that goes away like i don't think we'll see this card uh anyone else got hot takes on this one or are we moving on really solid arena card oh yeah this that's okay this is a the probably one of the best arena cards uh, in a while. This is real good. Unfortunately, I don't put arena cards in my decks. Eh, you played Rush Warrior. We have oh, not, not, not because we against, wanted to. Against our will. Not because we wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> Only because we had to. <laughs> Fair. Now, moving into our next card and our final Druid card of the night, Deji has another Legendary to talk about. Uh, yeah, we got Wing Commander Mulvrick. Um, this card just seems terrible to me. The only deck you would play this in is uh, probably Aggro Druid. And it's four mana. Only do something if you have a board. If you don't have a board, it's really bad. If you're playing against any deck that doesn't have minions, it's really bad. And if you have a board, it's like, okay. So, yeah. I don't know how this card's getting rated high at all. It seems really, really bad. This card is solo clear. It's a glow flies one. Okay. And the wyverns are beasts. Yep. Yep. They always yep. end up on those beasts. I'm just saying. One out of five. It's solo, it solo clears a glow fly swarm, and you like get to slam a couple of four fives down after it on turn four. It's oh, a solo it's before before the the stick on the stick, except not because you have to kill your own minions, and if your opponent kills your minions, you don't get the the trees. But it's an infinite soul of the forest if you're the one making the trades. That's insane. And yes, I know it's not, but it could be. Think about think about the times when it when it is. That's a that's the same. Fair. So like, I feel like it's like a reasonable comparison to make. It's with Ace Hunter Queen. Um, where it's like good if you have a board and it can pull you massively ahead in like board v board battles. Uh, the other half of the German always just in time chef. Uh person was making the point that like a lot of druid minions have even attack and so it can be pretty weird to like get the break points to where you can honorable kill odd health minions um but yeah it's like pretty hard to evaluate since it like can do like insane things with like glow flies and whatnot yeah this card or like this card slash something nails earlier remind me of like the bait a lot of people had in Stormwind of they were just assuming the game length would be like Barons uh, and misevaluate a lot of cards that way where a lot of people are going into this set with a null hypothesis that there's going to be about like a quarter or a third of the decks just don't care about boards because that's the status quo right now uh, and it's possible that still remains the case however if 
there's some of these strong cheap neutral cards like like Iron Deep Shrog that significantly changes that meta. Uh, some some of these assumptions about how many decks that care about board, how much board tension there is early on, could be quite different, could be quite off. And this seems like it's such a narrow card, but so powerful when it hits. This seems like a prime example of like. <laughs> if there's a third deck that don't care about board, I want this nowhere near my deck. But if it's zero, then I probably want this in. Uh, so then you're playing like low to mid curve druid decks because this card exists. Yeah, yeah. Like this, this card seems like more of a referendum on how good like the rest of the set is on how good on Iron Deep Trog is at unseating OTKDH and Grow Rogue <laughs> and such, uh, and, and out uh, Anaconda Druid and Poison Rogue uh, versus. Uh, how yeah, it's, isolation. it's just really hard to accurately rate the pacing of a uh, set before it drops. Yeah. It's something that you can I, I, I probably want to play in wild. <laughs> <laughs> Every deck here seems like it spans void early. Uh, but yeah. Um, I want to take this opportunity to talk about the general state of Druid. So, Neji, how often do you expect you're going to be facing Druid next expansion? Um, is the class looking good? Is it looking bad? We know there are a few different fronts happening, so tell me about your general views here. Um, yeah, Drew is the best deck for sure. Tier 1 beats everything. Uh, no. Um, I think Druid will be okay. Agro Druid looks okay with the Frost Saber Matriarch. It's not really any, any weaker. It definitely depends on the meta. Like, if there's a lot of control decks and board clears or whatever, then Agro Druid's not going to be that good, but control decks, lull. Um, if there's a lot of combo decks, then Celestial Druid might be played. So Druid is very flexible towards the meta. They're probably always going to have one deck that's going to be playable. But at the moment, I'm not sure what that deck's going to be because I don't know exactly what the meta is going to look like. Yeah, the, the, the one Druid thing that I don't think anyone's going to touch on is the three mana two four that makes your next choose one card, cost two less. Like, I only realized this recently, but like in Wild, where people can kill you on the same turn, they play Celestial, because they run the four mana, three, four, to like instantly gain a mana crystal. Three, five. Or, yeah, three, five. That's whatever that card is with stealth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and now you can do that in Standard, too, because you play Celestial and Nourish is immediately zero mana, and then you can do some crazy stuff. That, that just seems like, <laughs> that just seems like it has potential. Uh, I'm not sure I've heard many people talk about uh, even if just like current Anaconda Druid often plays the zero mana rushers right after Celestial to like not drop tempo as much, if you can play Nourish and then play a survival immediately that turn, so they're four four bigger. Uh, even if you're not like killing your opponent immediately, that seems pretty sick. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, if no one has any thoughts about Druid, I will move us along to uh, right now we have. Nails's card. Um, what is your second Aeon card, Nails? My second Neji card is uh, Kurtris, which uh, admittedly, like based on the points that I've been making uh, about no one really knows anything about the pacing of the format, uh, that's actually kind of uh, like my, my reasoning for thinking Kurtris is overrated is kind of, uh, it goes against uh, that point. Um, I think that uh, you're assuming that you're going to be able to stick a lot of minions is uh, a bit of a pipe dream, and getting a lot of value out of the card is just not really um, super consistent. The other uh, issue I have with it is that in order to make the um, the Kurtris Hero card good, you have to... Um, you have to run a deck that is going to suck if you don't draw Kurtris. Um, and so just those two factors of, like, you have to stick board and hope they have board, and also you have to draw the hero card in time to, like, win the game with a board deck. Um, it just seems really messy in practice, and I don't think the decks that it's going to be in are good. I think that it's a good card in a vacuum that won't be consistent enough. Sure. Um, just, like, for gameplay reasons and like if you draw the card on six every game yeah it's going to be a really good card i don't i don't think i think the decks are really going to struggle when if they don't draw their hero card
Uh, Baze, uh, any thoughts on Kartris? Yeah, I feel like building a deck around it is going to be a huge mistake. But like, yeah, the card in a vacuum looks great. Um, but it's really going to depend on what Demon Hunter decks you're playing. Because right now, uh, most of them don't care about board. Uh, you know, Death Rattle Demon Hunter might be like the best place for this because it's just fine. Um, but yeah, I, I think that people are, are overhyping the uh, the token aggro DH. Uh, how do you how do you feel about that, Neji? Um, okay, <laughs> we'll get to this later, but it's definitely a hopium deck. Um, it's obviously only be gonna be good if there's uh other board decks. If everything's like it is now, this card's super unplayable because there's no minions on the board, everyone just kills you. I mean, there's another good six mana demon under card, and um, <laughs> might be Ilganoth. Fair, yeah. Anywhere or else like maybe they're that? just uh, like they they could just be holding some secret synergy that goes with it. Like maybe DH is getting a bunch of one one chargers in the next set or something, and then the DH uh, sigil or like the persistent effect and uh, the hero card become absolutely cracked. Like uh, we didn't think Glide would be good, and then a year later, and they printed the perfect synergy card for it, and then oh, Glide's really good now. Um, so. Uh, for this set, I don't think Curtis is going to be very good. Fair. Um, now, Agent PWE is bringing us our final Aeon card of the night. Agent, go ahead. All right. This one surprised me at being so high, but it is Rune of the Archmage, the new nine mana. Mage spell. Uh, I looked at the other ratings for the big spell mage cards, and for like Belinda, which is the minion that like swaps its stats and cost with the spells, and people rated that like below 80. And then Ice Blood Tower, the most broken card in the set, uh, is also like 70. So apparently, people think that you play this card in a deck that doesn't have those. So, uh, I don't know, you quest mage is in the deck, but if it was, why would I ever run this in it? And ping and then any other mage, why would I run this in it? It's funny. I'll I'll give it that. It could like fireball you in the face three times, but I'm never putting this in my deck that's not Big Spell Mage. And apparently I'm not playing Big Spell Mage, so when am I ever playing this? I don't I don't get it. I don't I always have the hardest time closing out my, my uh quest mage. Games like I could, I could just never kill my opponent, uh, you know. So like you need you need this, right? Right. Most of like <laughs> a lot of the mage spells don't actually go face. Um, you need this to kill your opponent, but it doesn't actually kill your opponent. Is the issue with the current spell pool. Like what you usually get out of it is like it'll play like some card draw and some secrets and. Maybe it'll play a flame strike if you're lucky when they have a board, or maybe it'll play a flame strike when they don't have a board. Like it's you're generally gonna get some secrets and maybe some freeze effects and some card draw, and that it's not gonna be like the spell pool is a lot better when Solarian Prime was uh, a menace. Uh, losing like arcane missiles and frostbolt was already a huge hit to it. I'm like not even uh, referring to the mana cost increase. It's it's probably worse than it's definitely worse than box. Yeah, this card I've seen it in play from theory crafting streams, and pretty much every single time it cast flame strike on an empty board twice and then did nothing. Um, the spell pool, like Neil said, is it's really really not good right now. There's not very much burn. Um, we have ice blood tower, which just cuts half of the man off this. <laughs> I mean, if you're playing big spell mage, like, copium, then maybe it's okay. But like, if you get this off wand thief and ice blood tower off your rune, and then it casts garrote or something, well, you know, not not as good. But uh, yeah, I, I I have an argument. <laughs> Picture this: it's the empty final. You're in game five. 
and you're stressing out, are you putting your faith in Ignite and Quest Mage, or are you putting your faith in Nine Mana Box? Well, I rest my I case. Really no, I'm not going to this argument. Times, sometimes. This is I... like one of those, would you rather, where both the options are awful. You can repeat spells, right? Yeah. Um, it cast sure, Flame yeah, Strike I... twice, I watched it, it was terrible. Then then th what's going to happen is our opponent's going to have a board and we're going to play some flurries like 40 times and then play like 20 shooting stars and then it's going to cancel our opponent's turn because it took too long and then we're going to win the game <laughs> it's like it's like the guy that got banned yeah. for like the ignite mage shenanigans for being too long in animations but like legal you, you just got to see the lines uh, i personally have already signed up to study at the silver name academy of box mage and i will be winning the next MT. thank you Now, I am oh. going to take... Oh, go ahead. Anyone has anything to talk about this card? I was just going to say this actually works out perfectly. If you cast only fireballs and they all go face, you deal 30 damage, which is cool. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Fair. Um, now, I do want to take this moment to ask about the general state of Mage. Um, Mage is not doing great right now. So, I'm going to ask... Um, this time, I'm actually going to ask Agent PWE, is Mage going to be a good class, or is Mage kind of relegated to being what it is right now? Alright, so right now, Mage doesn't exist. Uh, there's maybe some hope for Ping Mage, because now you have good minions, but like that deck doesn't is bad, and having minions that like don't kill your opponent or stop you I guess stop you from dying or actually do things that are like not arena cards is bad so that's not good quest mage is not played nothing this new siphon mana card doesn't help quest mage with its problems so that's trash uh, big spell mage is a meme and probably not even a good meme or a funny meme uh, I think it they did a really good job nerfing the discover pool for mage by printing the worst cards you've, or spells you've ever seen and maybe we take Wand Thief out of Garrett Rogue. I think that might be the most impactful uh, impactful part of the Mage set, actually. Uh, I think Mazaki Mage, though, actually actually could be Tier 1. I'm a believer in the Mazaki Mage. You just... As long as it doesn't, like, instant lose to OTK Demon Hunter, because I've never actually played the deck. But if it doesn't, I, it, it certainly just, like, beats all the... All the hero cards, except for maybe Cario. So, like, while everyone's having fun playing their slow heroes, you just like kill them with Mazaki, and that's my belief. The only the only deck that might be real for Mage, in my opinion. There. Um, anyone else wants to talk about Mage? I'm sure Nails has played a bit of Mage. He might want to say something about that. Mage is my most played class. The class is not in a great spot right now, though. Like we're we're still, um, they've spent like a lot of the past sets, uh, just printing a bunch of spells. So Mage doesn't have like enough good minions to make us want to play yes minions Mage, and it doesn't like even have stuff that goes face. Like you can't freeze the opponent's face to have any counterplay to weapon decks, so you just lose to those. Like Mage's sets have kind of sucked. Uh, and it's been getting carried by flow for a year, and so yeah, we're they're the mage is currently down bad, and you can still Mizaki, but that is like the only playable thing your class can do. Um, they're gonna need like a really good set uh from the the next set of cards because this one ain't it. Okay. Anyone wants to share final comments about Mage? I'm so bored of Spell Mage. Please just, just <laughs> everyone stop. Just disenchant the every card that says a Mage on it. Oh, are we now in a Delete Mage meta? No, it's a personal vendetta. It's fine. It's not even a good deck anymore. But like, I'm just done. We can, we can, we can go on. I don't need to keep traumatizing myself. Yeah. Um, we are now going to talk about our Tonk cards. So Tonk cards, named after a team that I even forgot the full name now, um, they are cards <laughs> underrated by the community. 
Does anyone remember the full name of the original team? Justin might. Talk if you're corny, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, so, name for Tonk if you're corny. They're cards that are underrated by the community. And to open our underrated cards, um, we are going to have, let me make sure I have the right person. Yep, we're going to start with Agent PWE. Agent, what is a card that you think is underrated by the community? All right, so the field spells are some interesting ones. Uh, this one is ranked 81 out of 135, and it's the Warrior Ice Blood Garrison, which is two mana at the end of your turn. It deals one damage to all minions. So I, I don't think this card is like busted or anything, but it kind of like shuts down some board decks from like doing anything in the early game, and they kind of just cry. Uh, I mean, it's like a bad top deck later in the game, but that, if you're later in the game, hopefully you're actually doing something because you're Warrior. But maybe you're not. I don't know. I just I think you could see some more play than being rated a two or like mm -hmm. below a two. So I don't know. It depends. I guess it depends. If everyone's playing Ilganoth, the card's terrible. But if board actually matters, it's not that bad. Uh, Baze, what are your thoughts on Iron Blood Garrison? It's like. You can't time it, uh, skipper things, which is like, it's interesting. Uh, definitely is worth considering where, like, in the 80s, you just, those cards don't exist. They belong in arena and duels. But yeah, I, I think this card's definitely underrated. Anyone else? Nah, let's, let's go. Let's go. Okay, before we go into the next one, I have a question for Agent PWE. Um, this is our last Warrior card of the night, so Agent, what is going on with Warrior here? Alright, so the new Warrior cards, there's like the Legendary, which I already said was terrible, so uh, if you're going to play a Warrior deck and it's control where you're not going to put that in there, but it's got some, some good board clears with the new 10 mana spell that's actually a 0 mana spell and AoEs for 5. And it also has the armor card that you need in order to make the AoE spell cost 0. So a slow warrior deck is maybe okay with uh, the new hero card too because you get your tank up back except for the fact that you need to honorable kill a minion and how are you going to do that every turn? But if you ignore the part where you have to honorable kill the minion, it's like maybe okay. Uh, I don't know. I think Warrior beats Garrett Rogue, so maybe playing Control Warrior or Big Warrior is okay. Rush Warrior is still an arena deck. They've got some maybe okay cards to put in their arena deck that are also arena cards. Uh, I've heard people talk about playing to the front in Rush Warrior, and that sounds terrible. I mean, you can't, if you could make your minions cost zero, that's broken. But playing the two mana spell that's not a minion and can maybe make you play like an extra card on like turn five, it's like stupid when you could like do something else broken, like play Demon Hunter. So I think Warrior, Quest Warrior will probably just be the, the deck that you play. You could play a slower Warrior if Rogue is a thing, but. Probably, probably just stick with the pirates if you want to play warrior. Sure. Stick with the pirates. Does anyone have a different view of warrior? Anyone here thinks warrior will be more dominant? It was like pretty good for a while there, so I don't think it'll be more dominant, but I think it'll be. I think it'll have its place. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm I'm excited to try out uh, the new like more defensive warrior decks, but. Sure yeah, I want. I want to do. I want to do really suspect stuff like the the discount minions card, and then playing the glory chaser, and then the three mana two four taunts on on turn six. And just draw it a just, bunch of cards. Yeah, your just, yeah. just, that's, that, that's just powerful trust. That's glorious. <laughs> it's, the warrior card draw, it's the warrior card draw that we all knew, never knew that we wanted or needed, but might need. Um, 
I don't know. Playing I, provoke on nine to draw your deck. Like I mean, it, it's going to be infinitely easier to build build pirates. That's for sure. So it'll, that's what we'll see more in the first like eight days. But I don't know. Maybe maybe Fibonacci comes back or something and teaches us all. I don't know. I think there's there's cool ideas within Warrior though. That's for sure. Any final thoughts about Warrior before we move into our um second tonk card none of the new cards say pirate no they do not okay dardar do you want to reveal i was shocked when i saw that this card existed but do you want to reveal your first um underrated card absolutely we haven't even we didn't even pick a class card here i think i'm gonna i think that's what it is uh we went for a mega deep cut and picked Bunker Sergeant, okay? The Nuts, at least, at least the seventh best combination card with Baroff, at least the seventh best. If you look up on HS Replay what the most popular cards are at Top Legend, okay, uh, that are minions, all right? Guardian Og Virgin and Tour Guide, one health. Wiped out by Bunker Sergeant, okay? Clearly, okay, this card is the nuts in Arena, and the cards that are the nuts in Arena eventually make their way to standard Copium, okay? I promise you they do, just don't don't try and fact check me <laughs> on it. Uh, more importantly, it's ranked 124 out of 135, so it's like, it's kind of like a distressed investment where, like, there isn't much room for it to go down. So, like, it's kind of like I have a safe floor, you know what I mean? So, there's a lot of different ideas here. Okay, and one of them will absolutely work and it totally won't be a bottom 10 card, but maybe like bottom 30, you know, underrated. Mm -hmm. I think you might be a lone champion for this card here, but does anyone want to say anything? No, lone champion is the other 2-4 with Taunt and Divine Shield that interacts with board and minions and stuff. This one's the, this one deals an AoE. Uh, he was really digging deep uh, to find that bunker. <laughs> I, I'm the sergeant of this bunker. I'm the only one. <laughs> Let me be. Anyone want to argue against it? This is like an all almost playable card from 2016 that like did it one AOE in Mage and was a two two. <laughs> um, so maybe for in 2016, this card is pretty good, but. Uh... Yeah, he said it was during the card he got. That's a pretty accurate description of it. Absolutely. But now we have nine more classes to think of ideas for it, okay? And when we play when we play in a in the next MT next year and they ban away all the warrior board clears and you need something to work with Barov, you're gonna come running back. Trust. Okay. Uh, Baroff is a Skolomance card. It is dual class and is also gone next year. Yeah, don't worry about it. I meant this expansion okay, okay. and the first MT. Exactly the first MT, but none of the other ones. <laughs> I'm not worried. I'm not worried. Fair. Um, always Justin German Chef. I want to ask you two, um, or you one, about your first <laughs> Tonk card. Um, why is this here? Uh, br bridge is a lot of stats, and, and maybe it sees play. I tried to build theory crafts for Paladin decks with bridge, and they all look bad. But like, j just confidence. That's a lot of stats. Uh, I know Darion was hyped about, uh, uh, or did Jombre vibes of running the derailed coaster in it. I was hyped about it as redundancy of making like an all-in buff deck with uh, cheap stuff that works as well with a one cost paladin weapon, the jewel. Uh, and like, okay, like like this could be like the defining card in a build around deck. It's 77. Like, I'm not sure that deck is gonna quite be good enough, but 77 seems low. This seems like a lot more legit than like a spell mage or like like some of the other things. Uh, the, the other combo that I'm not sure has been mentioned yet is the three mana three one draw card. Uh, if you have the uh, three mana summon dudes that corrupts, it, it can cause zero this turn, and you can just play something for one and corrupt that and play it immediately. So there's like dream curves where you can coin bridge on three, and then on four, like play all, all your dudes and a bunch of 
uh, three three dudes and just have a huge stat power spike. Um, the Hearthstone Vindicator uh, only discounts it for this turn, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you would play Stone Vin Hearth Vin Vindicator on turn four after playing Bridge on turn oh, okay, three sure. or Coiny on turn three, and then for your last man on turn four, you play a one cost card. Like, like it, it, that's like the dream. That's not gonna happen very often, but. Uh, no, I thought, I like thought you were saying we we're gonna go like uh, turn three, player three one, bank the zero mana card, and then play Bridge into like a five three threes. And like if if you could do that, I'm all here for it. But yeah, not do that. So it's yeah. This this card feels like one like I don't know a little bit away from being broken, and might might not. Honestly, the rating might be be fair. The more I I've, I've thought about it, but. Uh, I think it's a good only, card. At the very least, it's one to watch out for for the future, even if it doesn't end up being quite good enough this set. But I do think it's probably uh, underrated because, like, it's it's a card that goes in decks and not a card that doesn't go in decks. So sure. Ah, I I do like defining cards that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, Agent PWE, do you have any thoughts to share on this one? Share with. You're muted. Can't hear you. Uh, as a certain card that doesn't exist says, uh, please share your thoughts with the class. All right, all right. Yeah, now. thank you. The, uh, this card's terrible. I've seen the theory crash where you put the deck in, and if you don't draw the bridge, your deck is worse than an arena deck. You never win. Um, if the opponent, if you do draw the bridge and your opponent st shuts down your bridge pu push, your deck sucks and you lose. Um, we said that Kurtris was bad because if you build your deck around it it's and don't draw it, it's bad. Except you can like put Kurtris in a deck that's not built around it. This card, I can't think of a Paladin deck that you'd want to put it in currently. That's not Those are terrible. Did you just put this in Quest Paladin? True. Do you and really then, like, do put this in Quest what, Paladin what? and then you take the Quest Paladin, Paladin out of your uh, Hearthstone client? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah like, before you do that, it is in the deck. In the only reason this card will ever see play is Quest Paladin. In cheap minion thief rogue, this is going to be pretty good as well. <laughs> so true, actually, so true. Oh my god. You get this off a lobotomizer. Oh man, you're oh you, you're in for a good time. Prep that bad boy out there. <laughs> I'm just I'm so excited to play to actually to watch Jambra play this into Derail Coaster. <laughs> Into Stonehearth Vindicator, pulling pulling wife because he played Mancrick, summoning a five nine, and then losing to like Immo Aura, Immo Aura plus a or or like a Soul Rend. It'll be great. <laughs> We're gonna have so much fun. Yeah, it seems like a Jumbra card. <laughs> oh yeah, this is absolutely a Jumbra card. So yeah, so maybe he'll make it work, and then it'll still be considered bad because if only one person can make it work, that doesn't mean much. But you know. Uh, yeah. This Just card seems not. like this card seems like the shaman weapon. Bogs my knuckles without like getting the weapon and without uh, and having without a being able to play Drive Corsair on yeah, the same turn. Uh, yeah, yeah. So like it's it's worse, but like that shaman weapon is really good, and certainly other classes would love to see it. So I, I'm not quite sure. I agree with Pee Wee. I don't see the deck, but just because I don't see it doesn't mean that no one does. Our derail coaster get into makes the chamber three chamber threes. Now. Make this Our derail coaster makes three threes now. That's just bigger than two drops. <laughs> Think about it. Just you, you, you need to listen to the vision. True. Not bigger than Scombray's two drops. True. Also true. But yeah, I, I don't have anything else out. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's it's a Jombre card. Uh, we'll see it because Jombre will play it and people will follow. It. But what what else are we going to maybe see? Let us um... where we're going next. Before we talk about what we're going next, I just want to ask you all about Paladin. Specifically, I want to ask um, Time German Justin Shep always um, what your Unity thinks of the Paladin class next expansion. Seems like uh, Paladin got a lot of good Druid cards. Uh, or sorry, Paladin gave Druid a lot of good Scenarian Ward cards. <laughs> uh, well. All the others look kind of playable. Like, Paladin had a lot of like semi playable decks right now. This fest set that were just like maybe not top tier, and they all got like slight buffs. So, sure. Uh, I'm not quite sure how, how what archetypes are going to coalesce because it had a lot this set, and it looks like some more are being opened up as well with like big Paladin or bridge Paladin. 
that may not be the most competitive, but it feels like there'll be things there. There's enough good Paladin cards now that you can throw together a lot of competitive 30s. Anyone else want to share their opinions on Paladin? Baze, how do you see the Paladin class? Uh, it's Iron uh, Trog class dot deck, and that's it. Uh, I mean, well, maybe play uh, stuff with the hero card, but I just want to give my Trog Divine Shield and then watch it watch it grow. Mm -hmm. Paladin's got the issue where they have Varian and then sort of Cornelius, I guess, but like you can't draw more than one card with any of your cards, and so you can't get card advantage, so you're just forced into tempo game plans, which isn't, like, inherently bad, but it just sort of pigeonholes you into going for, like, uh, tempo lines or, um, like, mid range lines. Like, you can't do anything more than that. They, like, even first day of school was pretty cool, but then that got nerfed to only make two dudes and cost one mana, and so Paladin just... Um, you can't play anything, like, especially longer. You have Liadrin, which makes a bunch of cards, but, yeah, I don't know. Paladin's just, like, at card disadvantage, and so it's kind of meh. Mm -hmm. So, now that we've finished talking about Paladin, um, Nails, why don't you tell us a little bit about Warlock? Um, yeah, like, oh, uh, my underrated card or do you want me to just talk about the warlock class yeah yeah your underrated uh, card yeah okay so i think full-blown evil is getting really slept on it's at like uh it was lower when i it's, it's like 50 ish i think that it's still probably slept on from there it's um a really flexible board clear which is always good to have um if you like you can echo it um, like you can pair it with other removals. It works really well with Moarg. Um, yeah. If you play it twice, then it's just uh, it is exactly the battle cry from the Highlander Reno card from Mage, and we know that that card was a pretty damn good board clear. Um, you don't summon a four six alongside it, but like it's um, it's just a really flexible removal removal card um, that I think is being slept on. I think it goes in defensive warlock decks. Um, the fact that it's asymmetrical is cool. Um, I'm a fan of the card. I don't think it's touch of the Nathism level, but there's a lot of good cards. Uh, you can have a good removal spell that isn't that good. Uh, I'm very excited about this with uh, Moarg as well. Like, uh, it's just card just seems super efficient. Uh, I I am really shocked it is that low. Um, I am gonna take the counterpoint. I actually think this is pretty bad. I think Warlock has better removal options. Obviously, we have single target removal that's really good. We have Soul Rend. I think Grimoire is also better because it costs less and you can also like draw on the same turn, which is what all the Warlock decks want to do. So I don't think spending your entire turn removing the board is really what Warlock's looking to do. So I think it's not very good. I don't think this card makes you spend your entire turn removing the board, unless it's a board that needs to have your entire turn spent on it. Like, I think it's... Um, I think that there is room in the deck to cut some other cards and play this in Fatigue Lock, for example, and it just makes the cut because it's um, it allows you to turn five, like, uh, blow up a couple of chump minions and play your tap. Like, I think that its flexibility is what makes it good. I don't think on turn five you're clearing much with five damage if you're also tapping. Like on turn five, they're gonna have a lot more than five health on the board, and like chipping away at the board doesn't really do anything. No, they played their trampling rhino, and then I cleared for five, and then tapped. Like, okay, I, well. I, I, they they didn't. I'm playing a defensive warlock deck. It's not like they I, they spent four turns building a board. Like this is just another removal card that's part of my kit, and um, it's it it, it doesn't have to do more than and clear the stuff they played on, like, a turn. It's, like, it's important counterplay to Quest Rogue, right? Like, it's, like, we really have awkward times with Quest Reward being stealth. I think that's, like, the one major sticking point of that oh, match. It's also, um, it's a Moonfang killer, and that's a big deal, because Moonfang solo yeah. is warrior, warlock. Right. But, I, I mean, 
we already got the lock of glutton right so that's true we're we're covered on that front no but i think it does like fit a niche and like really well i don't know how big the niche is but i think it's worthy of consideration for sure so like it, it probably doesn't make the cut in hand block, but I think that it has a deck that it goes in, and the deck is going to be pretty good, and so that makes it better than it's currently being rated. I'll keep us moving to our next card. Um, we have Agent PW bringing us a demonic card. Yeah, my uh, second underrated card is Teria Felsol, the six mana six six legendary and demon hunter and it battle cry transforms into a copy of a, a six six copy of demon in your deck. Uh this is just a third green rag for six mana. Uh that's good. Uh, I don't know why people think it's not good. You you already put green rag in your deck. You put this in your deck. Uh yeah. I mean Green Rag is like the only reason that non OTK Demon Hunters like ever kill you if you're playing a good deck. So if you could play like a third one and also play it on six, that will just kill them more. And uh Big Demon Hunter is a meme law. Why would I play this and that? Why would I play the Big Demon Hunter? It's just Green Rag. It's good. Um, Based, what do you think of getting a six mana six six demon? Uh, I don't know. Like, yeah, I, don't, I think big demon hunters cope, but like this is uh, sweet if you do have like a big demon hunter package and something that is fighting for board the whole time instead of just being boring. Um, so I, I could definitely see this if this was like a, a seven card package uh, alongside Sigil of Reckoning. <laughs> Anyone else wants to comment on Caria before we go into our final Demon Hunter card of the night? Um, Dar, Dar, take us into our final Demon Hunter card. All right, let's. I'll call on Neji real quick. Let's say it together. Token Demon Hunter <laughs> Copium. All right. Uh, Flag Runner does some cool stuff. Uh, it has six health. Magic Carpet had six health. Magic Carpet was pretty chunky. Um, but but I guess the thing with Magic Carpet was that we were playing uh, things that the the dormant that was buffing its health as well, so it was even like chunkier. But I digress. It's a 1-6, and it can scale pretty quickly, uh, depending on how much you kind of commit to building the deck around it. it this is sort of... A copium in the in belief that there are token slash aggro related demon hunters because that's probably where it only slots in but it does feel like a powerful card within set archetype um it's for that result probably you know a belief in aggro dh and then maybe it's like a three out of four it, it's one of the better cards in the deck i'd imagine and so for a card that was rated 98 out of 135 I think it's better than that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I would I would love to hear Neji back me up. <laughs> I also think this card's pretty good. Um, it gets really chunky really fast. Um, a one six is very hard to remove early in the game. This deck has a lot of synergy with um the cards you want to play, like the two two that summons two one ones when you attack. It's coming out. The card's really really good. Um, I mean, you could also run the three mana card that summons rush things. I don't know if that's going to be that good, probably in this deck, but again, I don't know if this deck will be that good. Um, but yeah, this is just a really solid card in that deck, and um, I think it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Sure. It's Anyone like really never clear your board, and it's a one six. What's the? What was that uh, Warlock card that got it from when you played? It feels like a reverse version of that, where you have to have board instead of playing board. So, like, it's always yeah. going to be a Dark bit worse than that. So, Dark like, Shark. yeah. Uh, I but think if you're it... curving out one into two with the, like, like a weapon or a hero power coin, the two drop that summons one ones, right? And then you have any, like, any slight sign of board tension, it 
does the job of kind of like getting past one attack quicker. Yeah. Which might be relevant. The difference yeah. between like this and Darkshire Councilman is this actually has to have the minions die before it gets buffed, or otherwise it's just hitting you for one. Um, like, it, if you're playing against, say, I don't know, a random deck, OTK Demon Hunter, they can just let the minions sit there for a couple turns until they talent a demo. I think that the... I think that if it got the attack when the, min, when the minions got... Like, so... I, I guess this way, um, you can play it after you've already played, like, your um, your weapon on one, and then your 2-2 two, two on two, which makes dudes... And you're too too stuck because they're playing druid, and so like you can hit them again and like have a bunch of minions, and like you just have seven minions on board, and you're going face for eight every turn, and they play alignment and like I don't know if the math actually works, but like it copes pretty well. Um, I want to take this moment to ask a question. To Dardar here, I want to ask you about DH. What is going to happen to DH once Alterac Valley comes out? Is the class okay, or is the class gone? Hmm. So I did a quick check of the cards that are in standard. I noticed that Moarg and Ilganoth and Fell Screen Blast still exist. Fair. So we're probably doing all right. Um, but there's a lot of, there's room for experimentation. Like uh, cards like Flag Runner and Urzel Giant, or Urzel Giant are kind of exciting. They do some mana cheat and some, you know, getting of stats. Sigil of, Sigil of Reckoning does some interesting stuff a little bit quicker than other ideas related to it did in the past. There's kind of a wide net being cast. And we know at least one thing is good in OTKDH, at least power level relative to now. We'll see how it does in an Iron Deep Trog meta. But, you know, it, it feels like it's in a, like a pretty decent spot. It's probably good for at least like top four, I'd say, classes. Um, Fair. But I actually don't really know <laughs> what I'd be rating above it. I guess Rogue. And then I don't know after that confidently. It, it's and I'd say it's in a decent spot overall. Um, anyone else want to share an opinion on DH? OTK Demon Hunter is the bar that every deck is compared to right now. Like, can you fight against this deck? Okay, no. You, yeah, this card kind of sucks. Like, um, it's just kind of the barometer for the format right now. And maybe Trog uh, completely invalidates the deck when they draw Trog, but, uh, I mean, it dies to an I-beam on Curve, so I'm still not really a believer. Um, okay. But, yeah, I, I think Demon Hunter's got the best deck. Um. Okay. And so, class is in a good spot. I don't think any of the other decks are any good, but... Okay. Uh, Moonfang is better into it now because of the Moarg interaction patch. That's true. I'm um, having lost a game recently because of that interaction. I, um, yeah, <laughs> I would help. Um, hope Moonfang becomes better so I can play it, but we'll see what happens there. Uh, Neji, do you want to tell us about your first Tonk card? Uh, yeah. We have Baron Glacier. Um, I think this card is very powerful. It can be played in elemental decks. Um, you have Sleepbreaker. You could run Frostbite. You could run Wind Chill. Just depending on like the uh, actual density of Frostbolts you want. You have to play around with that and see what you actually need. Um, but it gets discounted by Forgeborn, which is really good. And the really big thing is that you can play it, and then your opponent clears it, and they're like, okay, good, cleared this. And then you play Brilliant Macaw, and you summon the board again, and then they don't have a clear for the second one. So I think it's a really nice late-game um, bomb in the deck, and being able to play it twice with the Macaw is also really good. 
I'm not sure if Frost Shaman's actually going to be a good deck. Obviously, you would play this in that deck, but I think it's just good in um, Elemental Shaman. So yeah, I think it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, Baze, what are your thoughts on the bear here? Uh, I mean, like this is my favorite card uh, from the set, uh, and that's totally based on looks. Uh, but I, I, I'm excited about it. I don't think it's going to be uh, super good, but I think it's interesting. I think uh, it makes you want to consider playing like a little frost package in like Elemental Shaman. But I'm excited to play it. Anyone else wants to comment on Baron Glacier? Um, its name is clearly a playoff of uh, Baron Nasher, so it should be pronounced Baron Glasher. I do not know who that is. Uh, Baron Nasher is a League of Legends uh, like uh, oh. boss fight, um, and so. and and just like the boss fight, this card is the boss. So you know, it's, true. it's like a pretty decent. It, card. It, it, it it fits in pretty well here, but it obviously would have fit better in strong card. But that's okay. Respect to Neji for giving it the credit it deserves. He picked three strong cards. It's fine. Um, Neji, I want to take this opportunity to ask you about Shaman State. Shaman had... It would come in and then go away and would come in and then go away. And it's kind of in this state right now where it's a very... I would say it's a fringe deck. It's like tier 2. Sometimes you see someone get high legend with it, but not as high as you would expect given some of the cards that are there so what i want to ask you is is shaman going to be better next expansion uh it's definitely hard to tell shaman's getting a lot of new cards that are trying to push this new archetype of free shaman i'm not sure if it's going to be that good right now you have like elemental shaman doom hammer shaman which are like sort of playable not really and then quest shaman's probably the better one also not that great uh, I'm not sure how good Quest Shaman will be next set. It's a decent control deck, and you can do some powerful things with Burst and Charge Call. Um, but it's really going to depend if there's going to be um, combo decks that are prevalent or if control decks are actually going to be sort of playable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know about Shaman. It's tough to call just because so many of their cards are uh, brand new, pushing this one archetype. So really have to just see if that deck is going to be any good. Mm -hmm. Anyone else wants to talk about Shaman here? Control's dead. How dare you say that it's a control deck? I... Um, uh, I think that Shaman's hero card is pretty cool. Uh, been calling him uh, uh, Dr. Brook Bad Genius, but like He's not that uh, terrible. He's, like, pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it just kind of, like, turns out some value. It's an infinite value engine that's probably going to be cooler after rotation than it is right now. But, um, mm -hmm. like, uh, right uh, for this side, it's going to be man, then it's probably going to be pretty cool. That's uh, all I really got. Um. So I have a quick question. Does... Uh, Macaw, Brilliant Macaw, synergize with Brukan. Can you fireball their face extra for three? Yep. Oh, that's better than I thought. Uh, yeah. Does it work with Bolner Macaw as well? Uh, yes. Because Bolner yeah. repeats the first minion, and then Macaw repeats the last thing. Which yeah, so you can, yeah. You, you can play Bolner Macaw, one drop, one drop, one drop, and just like OTK if that's uh, your jam. It won't. Choose. So it, it'll. So yeah. repeating oh, the macaw will really just. Random. Repeating the macaw will just repeat the most recent battle cry you played. So it'll repeat whatever cards you play after. Mm. Oh. Uh, mm. So you'd have to go like, Brukan, or you'd have to go a second macaw. Like that's the only way you can trigger Brukan three times. Unlucky. Interesting. Yeah. Unlucky. I mean, at least the cards will probably be together in the same deck, and then sometimes we get the added payoff. We'll take that. Mm -hmm. um, and Macaw is probably random, but 
sometimes it shoots face. Yeah. Sometimes there's other cool stuff that you want. And sometimes it'll be like the Rune of the Archmage where it casts a flame strike when we didn't want it to. <laughs> Unlucky. Really well. 25% chance to go face. Yeah. Um, as for our next card, Nails, why don't you tell us about another neutral card? Yeah, so I think that the Owl is uh, really... I don't know if it's like really good. I, I think that it's playable in some decks, and I don't know how good those decks will be, but this is kind of the bridge argument where there are decks that it will exist in, and like it'll be a focal point of those decks. And so that means it's better than um, the community is rating it. Um, and like a little bit about this, a little bit of this rating is just seeing that people have been like con specific specifically uh, Zach said he was really confident in his uh, owl list, and so I'm kind of just trusting that like the, uh, trusting that something's going on there. I think that the card yeah. is uh, like. The, the death rattle just of DLA damage uh, is something that's going to mm -hmm. show up at some point. Um, I'm not yeah. precisely sure how, but um, I, I think that it's probably being slept on. Mm -hmm. It's if someone's going to make it work angle. I don't know exactly how. Mm -hmm. It's also really big. Yeah, that's a pretty good body. Um, Agent PWE has something to say about this one. All right, so less of a comment on this card because this card's a meme. But just because your entire deck revolves around drawing a card doesn't mean that means that the card is good. Uh, Elwyn Boar is a card, and I've seen some people trying to play that, and that card is not good and not it's funny maybe, and this card is maybe funny. So. Yeah, uh, but it's uh, it's it's definitely giving me Owen Boar vibes. This uh, this big owl. Um. Okay, so... but owl owl lock is the most fun thing you could say. I think in all of our stuff. So. That's true. true. That's just facts. That is a fact. Um, I believe Chef has something to add about this one. They might, but they're muted. Oh. Sorry. The Sorry. Us. I was distracting him with memes. He was telling <laughs> me how Lotus thought that Elwyn 4 was I... legit a week ago. It it won me four games in a row, and then it <laughs> lost everything, which was really bad. I didn't think it was legit, but I thought it was better than I had seen. I mean, the comment says legit. I don't know what to believe. <laughs> but um... it's legit pretty, pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> On Owl, it's a 7 minute 8 4 do nothing, and like it doesn't impact the board, you know. And I would argue <laughs> PWE said it was funny, but it's not even funny because it doesn't do enough random. Like, you know. It does say random on the card though. Yeah, and but. And it does like... impact the board. Like, you, you were wrong about that. It says that uh, uh, deal 8 damage to their 1 1. I knew on my side. Yeah, oh, shoot. Oops. Yeah. So, yeah, it, so it doesn't we impact saying, the board. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, we would like to... We would like to inspired. abstain. Oh, yeah, that. Um, now, I will take this opportunity to ask Nail, since Owl's kind of a Warlock card, what do you expect Warlock to be next expansion? Are we still just going to see the Demon Seed? And is that enough to carry Warlock for another set? Um, so, uh, I mean, Demon Seed should be fine, um, but I, uh, I think Zoo might have some future. I think pee has got, uh, better, uh, takes on this than I do, though. So I'm going to defer to him. Ah, uh, okay, uh, if the take is just on Warlock, um... This owl thing is terrible. Uh, Zoo Warlock is maybe okay because it's got some good cards. You can try playing it. It might beat OTK Demon Hunter, so there's something there. Uh, 
hand lock. It's still hand lock. It still does the things. You can put the new hero card in it. Uh, you don't put the the wrist spell in your deck, like Nails would have said if he kept talking. Um, it doesn't have any synergy. But you could put it in there if you like to meme and put bad cards in your deck. But I think that just the fatigue lock where you draw your deck really fast, it uh, might have a like a good shot at being relevant with I don't remember exactly what but you can put the hero card in there you can draw your deck your opponent's playing slow hero cards you kill them every time uh, the problem is it insta loses to OTK Demon Hunter so it's actually not good at all um, but if the meta slows down that deck will be insane but yeah Fair. I think it'll just be the same decks just more refined with their cards in them Fair. yeah um, Dardar, do you want to tell us about your opinion on Warlock? I think the Warlock class will be great, made up of decks that consist of Dreadlich, Tamsin, plus 29 other cards. And I think those variations of 29 other cards might be fine, but Dreadlich, Tamsin is great, and will go in all of them. Maybe all of them, probably all of them. It should be in all of them. Fair. And Dreadlich, Tamsin is a great card that you could build around. Literally, anyway. And so maybe one or two of those ways work, especially the ones that already exist and seem to be all right. So, yeah, I think it's... When I think of, like, DH and saying it's probably, like, the four best ones, uh, Warlock's probably with it as well. I kind I think it's pretty strong. It might just be that I think Dreadlish Tamsin is strong, and then the rest of the core that already exists is all right. Mm -hmm. But play 29 other cards, we'll figure out what those ones are. Mm-hmm. I'll keep us uh, moving. You... Um, anyone wants to say uh, anything? Uh, Pee Wee was referring to a deck that I tried to theory craft and uh, didn't end up being very good. And probably, uh, I'll probably play a game with it or two just uh, for experience sake. But yeah, you don't have to have every theory craft hit. It's fine to build the decks. Fact? Um, no, like I, I gotta and I gotta reserve the bait. Uh, lists for stuff that i at least believe a little bit in um that was just a, an exercise that uh the seeds of uh what's the card called seeds of uh destruction deck uh mm -hmm. didn't pass the bait check just that's fine yeah not everything has to be bait fair um as we move into our final two cards neji why don't you tell us about our last hero card of the night we have Zyrella the Devout. Um, yeah, this card seems pretty good. Uh, you can trigger your death rattles of like Light Shower, which will heal you for eight. There's the new Spirit Guide, which draws two cards. Um, if you're playing Melarg Forge Fiend, you gain armor. That might not be that good. Um, I swear there's another one. I can't remember what it is, but yeah. Death Rattle is good, and also the Hero Power is really good, because you can actually close out games because the Hero Power does 5 damage every other turn, and healing 5 is also cool. So yeah, I think it's pretty good. It just might not be that good if uh, the deck, like the meta is just how it is now. If it is how it is now, then obviously this card's terrible, because OTKDH and Garot Rogue and Handlock would destroy this deck, but if aggro decks exist maybe you need to play priest again and um it could be really good and yeah having a finisher is cool now i'll take this opportunity before we open to everyone to ask you about the general state of priest can priest survive in this expansion in a non-elusha world uh lucia is pretty damn good unfortunately um there is that new bless card, so maybe somebody can make a good like combo priest deck that has inner fire in it. Um, when that combo priest uh, came about, I don't know, it was like a couple years ago. It wasn't like nobody thought priest was going to be good, and then all of a sudden this deck was built, and it was just insane. It was brought to worlds, and it was one of the best decks. So maybe there are the tools right now, but I think it'll get better in the future. Obviously, with more cards being released. So I'm not super hyped about Priest in general, but again, maybe the Control Priest can work with Cyrella. Um, but yeah, I don't think Priest is going to be too strong next set. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, yeah. I think Priest got some good cards. But um, it's currently down really bad. And so it needs uh, it needs the OTKs to kind of chill out. Um, mm -hmm. uh, once yeah. once uh, Ilganoth uh, takes a break and um, Gear Out Rogue doesn't have Ethereal Og Merchant, I think uh, Priest might have something to play for, but it currently just uh, gets blown out by... And, and, like, Warlock loses Backfire, that'll be big for it. Um, uh, we're, we're currently not at that point, so Control Priest. Uh, like, you can gain armor with more Forge Fiend if uh, the DH of the Rogue brought him back to all of their card draw. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, the Priest class is here for at least one more set of coping. Mm -hmm. But guys, Miracle Priest, it's so good. <laughs> like, you'd put a bunch of bad cards in your deck, and then on one turn you do something and hope it wins, and when it doesn't, or when you die... We, then we can play the... the deck. There's the new 3-mana 2-4 neutral that gives you the things that buff health, so now we can pop oh. off harder and quicker. Yeah, the point of Miracle Priest is you put a bunch of bad cards in your deck, but then you play all of them on one turn. Exactly. And like sure, that's, that's already bad. better. That's already better than the banana man or whatever Jambro was running. Unfortunately, he <laughs> also already got that when he was playing it. So like, it's not better whatsoever. But like, I don't know. Maybe I do know that Iron Deep Trog plus Bless beats I Beam. It dies to Immowar afterwards, but don't worry about it. Sure. There, I don't know. There, uh, uh, it's a hard cope for me. This class is not as good as Rogue. No. Now, as we move into our final card of the night, I want to ask German Justin, always Shep time, um, what they brought. And before they say anything, I want to make a confession. I had a pretty bad pack opening, and I'm really hoping that they can convince me that of the very few legendaries I opened, that this one is okay. All right. I'm glad that we're ending this off with the best card in the set, or the best take in the set at least. Uh, the card is a Wing Commander Ickman, and we are arguing that it is underrated with the context that it is the 135th out of 135th card in the set. And I'm making a formal plea to all the viewers currently to help me get this to the 134 out of 135th <laughs> slot, take all out some random cards from Face yeah. Hunter, <laughs> and <laughs> decrease those percentage points, and know that you'll help the cause. Face Hunter. Let's go. Yeah, I believe that we can do this together. You could be our wingman, as a wing commander, even. Oh, yeah, that's, a, if, uh, that's as good a reason as I need to put that in. For that yeah, uh, what even beasts are you trying to summon from your deck? I don't understand. This feels like the anti-scabs. The scabs had so many lines of text on it. That the line like, is to not read it? the card. Don't read the or, card, or this, this, put it in this, your deck. Why it Trust me, more? you don't want to read the card, just it, it put can, it in. It can, give, uh, it can give Bunny Rush, which is sick. Uh, that, that's like the best application I could think of. Uh, Dark Moon Rabbit, that's it. Yeah, that's the card's name. Uh, yeah. So yeah, if you just put Dark Moon Rabbit in your deck and don't draw it by turn 9, but you draw this card, uh, this, this is good. Uh, Wait, does again, Dark Moon Rabbit rate, it's the lowest rated, so by definition, <laughs> it can only be properly rated or underrated, so yeah. Let's make it underrated. Let's, let's make it underrated. I believe in it. Um, so if this card pulls Bunny, does Bunny pull 3 minions? Uh, I, 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 no, I probably not. So. <laughs> if it did, oh, it might actually be good. Oh, wait, I don't it think does. so. <laughs> if, it kills this if, if it kills, like, if it, that's if it kills one, I presume if it kills three, is the hey, same. Hey, you need to test that. Every one true, of you needs true. to test that. <laughs> yeah, you. I mean, actually, we think it will pull three. This is uh, the basis of our reading. If it's wrong, and it, that's it's the, not our fault, like, <laughs> our, our, and you always draw buff bunny first and then into like your three other beasts that's that's the order you want with this sure uh. um nails what do you want to tell us about this one so if you're uh, willing to play this card and king crush in your deck then you can like play your nine mana five four um and then summon your king crush and go face and it's like 
um, the Highlander brand card, except two mm -hmm. mana more. And you have to play a King Crush oh. Not or right. or you could play Dino Trader Brand and trade the King Crush to get another beast, <laughs> which after uh, of course we've already uh, played. Well, okay, so that's just pulling the second King Crush the Dire Frenzy, right? Yeah, I was about to say we've already <laughs> played Dire Frenzy, so like you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. This is like Beastmaster Lee Rocks, except it doesn't require all the setup. It just requires one bad card, not ten. <laughs> The well, dire frenzy. We, we dire frenzy our king crush, but don't worry about it. Okay, well, it, it's like four, but that's still less than ten, so we yeah, take so, those. So we're playing, we're playing battle ram, and then we're reviving pet on the battle ram, so we're banking four mana of discount, and then on turn eight we still have coins somehow, and we're playing king crush coin dire frenzy. Turn nine, we're playing this. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, now we're, now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, yeah. We have like the um, defensive package with the big beast and revive. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 yeah. We're here. We're here. Surely one not, of the pack fillers. Like, there is so many neutral common pack fillers. Like they gave the arena streamers like finally their card reveal for their pack filler, and the pack filler was extra pack filler this time. Extra pack fillery. Very arena. Surely one of those is where they gave the filler. It's to not bunker the sergeant. It's not bunker sergeant. Um. Yeah. So as we finish this, I want to ask about Hunter. Is Hunter still around and hopefully in a form that's not hitting him in the face with doggy biscuits? <laughs> um, Justin, what do you think? Remember when Face Hunter last set got aim shot and literally nothing else, and that took it from being like a really good deck last meta or in Barons to like still a really good deck in Stormwind because it <laughs> all it needed was one. That, 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 that's kind of what it feels like this time with, with maybe Bloodseeker, if you with buy that. Wink or with <laughs> the big one is Iron Deep uh, Trog. Like, uh, just insane with all the buffs in the deck. Uh, yeah, it, it's good right now. I, I, I think it got better. Narrowly. And that'll be cool. Uh, you can run Spring the Trap and Quest Hunter and get two Quest procs for one card for four mana. That seems sick. Uh, and you can disenchant the rest of the cards. Except wing commander. Except, except, yeah, yeah, in point correction. Well, how do you say that? Yeah, because uh, yeah. you need that one for sentimental value. I, I theory crafted the a revised pet hunter a bit, and it, 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 it's probably better than I'm making out to be because there's probably better cards you can run, but it really looks like worse Lilithrum Paladin to me. Like, you can draw exactly your one reducer, your four mana, four, three, and then play your exactly like your mountain bear on fire, or like maybe a little redundancy, and then keep thinking, why would I not want to play like Truth Seeker into Hope and actually have like other good cards instead of just like mid range hunter cards? <laughs> sure. And then we can beat up a board based deck as long as it's not like Quest Rogue, which can just eat your guy. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like Face Hunter, which already killed you, or yeah. Aggro Druid, which already killed you. Uh, but we can beat up one of the other board based decks, which is yeah, the, the deck building or, like, challenge. Like Shaman, which transforms your guy, or your bear that you played on five when you drew your nut curve. Um, the, the, like, the challenge really of running enough removal to, to actually have any hope of responding to your opponent's threats to live to your mid range pressure you get there, because the curve one through three of the deck's awful. But running enough removal one through three to survive while also running enough density of mid-range threats that you can actually power spike it, it seems like it's a 40-card deck. It seems like you can't fit everything in what once, or not that you can't fit everything, but that there's actually only, like, five cards I want to run in my deck. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we can discount Moonfang and then give it Doggy Biscuit. Sure. We really can do that, and that sounds powerful. Yeah. Or we could put Moonfang and Taste Hunter and put Doggy Biscuit on it. It's like Doggy Biscuit's a good card. Um, well, we're gonna wrap up uh some some of this with just some some quick hits. Uh, not really a ton to elaborate on. It's just it's all personal opinion now. Uh, you know, not that any of this this it was all facts before this. Um. But uh, we're going to talk about everyone's favorite card from the set, starting with the Sherman Time Shep, always. Favorite card. Yeah, was your favorite, favorite card? card? 
If we forgot what our favorite card is, <laughs> you, you design, right? uh, your favorite card was Seraphine Fleet Runner. Oh, I have no idea what this card is. Yeah, is that new? Didn't they print a five mana spell that's literally just test? It's literally test. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm confused because you called this new test when it's I mean, it's all test. It, it's, it's a new, collective test. It, it's new. So, yeah. It's new deck. Test is back, see. and it's better than ever. Okay. Not really. But play it also because we need to boost the stats on this one, too. So. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. That was okay. my bad. Uh, Neji, what is your favorite card of the set? Uh, Wild Heart Guff. Guff is cool. Guff is cool. The himbo is a beautiful, beautiful boy. Uh, Dardar, what is your favorite card? All right, I'll try and make this quick, but I just wanted like minimal setup in my mind here. So do you remember Egg, but then like Evil Summoner? But then do you remember like Devil Star Egg and then like Terror Skill Stalker or whatever? Have you imagined that? But now in 2021 with Sacrificial Summoner when it takes an egg and then makes like a 3-4 alongside the egg and then the 3-3 as well? Mind blown. Sacrificial Summoner, the nuts, new Terran 2.0. Pop. Uh, yeah. I, am, I am in. I am in. Love it. Uh, Nails, your favorite. Uh, Najek Hexen, the priest legendary that I have to actually say that it's a priest legendary because no one's heard of it. Um... <laughs> steal a guy and like do something with it and then don't give it back because you're a priest and you found a way to cheat like, i don't know it, it seems like it's a cool card i don't know how good the decks that it's gonna go in are but i, I like the card i hope so i pulled it in gold i i'm gonna try it uh probably bad but pwe where are you at what's what's your favorite card uh my favorite card is spirit guide the priest card that has taunt draws two spells uh I miss playing Control Priest. I want it back. Uh, this card's OP. Uh, Control Priest is an OP. I don't think it's coming back, but Copium, I want to play Priest. Uh, all right. Uh, sure. Maybe maybe uh, we can play Priest again. I'm, I don't want to play Priest ever again. That's uh, okay. Uh, um, but now we're going to talk about... Before we go into the next one, I have a quick question for you. What is mm -hmm. your favorite card? Oh, I, I said it. Baron is actually uh, the background of my phone. I put the, the the official art on my phone. It's it's good. It looks good. Nice. What about you? Ah, uh, I thought about this a bit. I it's hard to answer what I actually really like this set, but just a a card that I'm really curious to try here is actually Revive Bet. I want to see if you can make something broken with it because it's so man efficient. Yeah. Fair. Um, all right, now we're going to talk about what's going to be tier one, uh, starting with Neji. What is the, the new deck uh, that's going to be tier one? <laughs> um, token Demon Hunter. Uh, this is definitely a bit of a Hopium one, not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's actually that good, but you know, I had to pick something, so yeah. Hey, it'd be fun, and it's definitely uh, better than some of the uh, just really safe picks we saw from everyone else. Uh, mm -hmm. No, no one want to put skin in the game. Uh, but uh, Justin, Chep, time German, what's up? What's up? What's up? Uh, yeah, T one is revive pet hunter. Not to be confused with lowercase revive pet hunter. Our revive pet hunter pet hunter is all caps. And this is the revive pet hunter we're excited for, not the one that we talked dismissively of earlier. Just to be clear. Uh, yeah, but they do entail the same cards. Yeah. Uh, revive pet has the best art of the set as well. Uh, let's put it out there. Uh, so yeah, it's a it's a good art card. We we talked about before uh, like a little off stream, but uh, we both see ourselves a bit in this card. Uh, <laughs> Shep sees himself as... Oh yeah, I guess you can fill that. Yeah, yeah, So, like, if you look closely at the art... Uh, you'll notice. You'll like, notice that there are two main right? characters. Oh my god, where is it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, and Hold if you look up. closely, I see myself as the tree to the leftmost. Uh -huh. Not to be confused there, there's with some, anyone. Yeah, there's, there's a few trees in the background. He's the leftmost one. And there's also a pretty sunset in the sky, and I'm like the pixel right above like the dog wolf's head. Right. Uh, so so we're, yeah. we're both represented in this card. Uh, and yeah, I think that, we're, that's why it speaks most to yeah. us. Yeah. So even even if you you give your doggy a biscuit and it dies and that you're sad, don't worry, it's coming right back. Oh, all right. Um, okay. But then quality is going to be tier S, which is why this deck is only going to be tier one in comparison. Ah, uh, uh, gotcha. Uh, Dardar, what's uh, what's the new tier one deck from you? 
Okay. Given that I rated one of the cards that would probably go into it as overrated, I think Free Shaman is a perfectly reasonable, slightly skin in the game type of decision to make here. Uh, being held up by the new card, Berhon Glacier, as the French would absolutely pronounce that. You're welcome for me cursing everyone in this uh, in the stream. Uh, there's some fun stuff going on here. Uh, and maybe it'll be good. I, I like freezing stuff, and then I like playing the hero, and I like going face, and then I like, you know, I like repeating that. And maybe this can do that, and maybe it'll be good. There you go. Yeah, uh, we are going to say bye to uh, Always Shep Time German. The, uh, it, I can't do it anymore. They had to, they had to bounce. Anyways, uh, we're moving on. We're going PWE. Who do you got as the new Tier 1 deck? You're muted. Yeah. Then I'm all right. So basically, uh, I just said you play Korak and Rogue, and that's Korak Rogue, and you play sketchy information, you summon him. Uh somehow you do stupid things and get a bunch on your board and you smack them repeatedly. And you're it becomes so meta breaking that only decks that can deal five damage to Korak on turn four <laughs> are, are relevant and it's insane. And you don't lose to Ilganoth or Garrett's or anything else, never. Never. Uh, and Nails. Nails has the, the, the hottest as it takes. Nails, what's the new tier one deck? All these decks suck. Uh, Scab's OTK Rogue is the best new deck because it gives one new card to the OTKs and Garrett. I think the card is absolutely cracked in those decks, but yeah, I think all these new decks suck. Fair. Um, do you still um, play... I think Free Shaman's okay, but I don't think it's tier one. Hmm. Yeah, I just straight up don't think we have new tier one decks until some nerfs hit. We will definitely see. Um, let's talk about looking forward. What is the the new card that you're looking forward to playing? Uh, let's start with BWE. All right, I unmuted myself this time. Uh, I said I like playing priest. And Bless is a Priest card that might be broken because it's a card they removed from Standard for a reason in the form of Inner Fire. So maybe I can play Priest and play a minion and it sticks and then the opponent loses the game because they couldn't clear every minion I played. That was a pretty fun time. So I'm looking forward to doing that again. I'm sure everyone is. You just are uh, with all the hits, all the Priest. Um, Dardar, what card are you looking forward to playing day one? Uh, I am a loyal disciple of Jambra, so of course, uh, Dunbaldar Bridge. Also, this is a direct meta response to the fact that big, big spell mage will absolutely be tier S from the get go. So, in order to counter that, we make big boards early. Uh, you can ignore the fact that like any minion being played at any point would probably be big spell mage. Just ignore that, okay? Specifically, Dunbaldo Bridge will be the counter, and therefore, this is the first thing I want to try, of course. Of course, of course. Love it. All right, Nails, what card are you looking forward to playing uh, day one? Uh, I'm looking forward to play, to messing around with Two to the Front Warrior. Uh, I'm kind of about the control deck that OTKs you from 30. Um, and so, seeing if Warrior can be like the third. Uh, deck to go along with my Garrod and my OTK is something I'm really interested in finding out. Uh, whether or not it actually can do that, like maybe you just don't draw fast enough and so you're looking at a turn 17 kill angle, like that might be where the deck ends up, but I'm, I'm interested to try it out and see what we can do with it. Yeah, uh, I think it'll be fun. Uh, Neji, what card, are, I'm going to be surprised, what card are you, you looking forward to playing? Uh, well, since Token DH is going to be a tier one deck, obviously Urzul Giant is the nuts. It's just better than Flesh Giant in every way. Um, yeah, Token DH, play it, guys. It's it's, it's good. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Shep Time uh, put Ice Blood Tower, which I don't think is actually in the set. So uh, we'll move on from there. I don't think that's a real card. Uh, new art. What is your favorite art from the new set? Uh, Dardar, what what's your favorite new art? Um, so I had an initial idea 
but then I noticed an even better idea, which is uh, double agent, right? Because double agent, he's doing the thing. Like if you're an NFL fan, you'll notice that Cam Newton recently came back to the league and he does, he does like the Superman celebration. That's kind of what double agent's doing here. I really think that double agent is the one that inspired Cam Newton to return to the NFL. And if the card is that powerful in itself, then really you have to think that it's going to be good for something, which I'm saying at a minimum will be the card art. Fair. I, I cannot fault that logic. Uh, PWE, what's your uh, favorite card art from the set? All right. So originally I chose the 4-4 in Druid that has stealth and summons a stealth 2-2. But then I'm like, wait a second. Frostwolf Kennels is like that card, but it summons three of the tokens. So it's like three times as good. <laughs> but I mean, like, just look at it. Come on now. It's like the best. The it's like Murloc Tiny Fin, except not a disgusting Murloc. It's like the best art I've ever seen. Yeah, that is fair. Uh, I I know you're all gonna be shocked, but uh, Shep Time had Revive Pet, the card art that they are um, in. Surprisingly, uh, so that's what they chose. Nails, uh, what are what's your favorite new art? Uh, Mass Polymorph. I, I love the cheapies. The, both the the THL team and also the the polymorph minions on the card art. Um, they just uh, they they've all got their different expressions. They're like they're bewilderment with turning into sheep. They're uh, disgruntlement or uh, they're uh, um, the fact that they're upset with being turned into sheep. My vocab doesn't have a word to uh, to, to stretch there, but yeah, I, I just love the sheeps. Sheeps are good. I, I am also a fan of that art. And then finally, Neji, what is your favorite new card art? Uh, mine is also Revive Pet because I'm such a fan of Justin the Sunset Pixel and Shep the Tree. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. And then what better way to end it? But we'll talk about the absolute worst card. Just the it's garbage. This is the 135 out of 135. Uh, we'll start off with Nails. Nails, what's the worst card in the set? Worst card in the set is uh, Ickman, Commander of Wings. It, it is so bad. It's a 9-drop uh, in Hunter, which um, you, you gotta be better than uh, Katharina or whatever her name was uh, to be played uh, at that mana point in its class. Like, um, the only time you ever see this card is when uh, you get a random nine drop and you're upset that you low rolled. Like, the, this card is completely unplayable. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, nothing else. Uh, uh, it's easy, uh, short, short time, easy wrong. Uh, on there, underrated. Uh, PWE, what is the worst card in the set? I was looking through the cards and like the pack filler trash was like not as trash as usual. Like none of the cards just like instantly lose you the game and you play them. But this card is like unplayable in like eight of the ten classes and then a mage and maybe there's a fire spell somewhere else. But mage, why would you play this in mage? And the only time you're ever going to see this is randomly and you get this randomly. It's never unfreezing. Um, it's terrible. <laughs> Uh, not even a generic <laughs> card. Uh, I don't know. You'd think that pack filler would be playable in some sort of format, but this is just the worst thing I've ever seen. So yeah, uh, uh, that's where you're wrong. We've got backfire. We've got explosive trap. We got <laughs> perpetual flames. We, yeah. we, we've got options, man. It's it's going in warlocks. It's going in hunters. You heard it here first. Nails is playing this card. Uh, I've heard people go. I don't know if this will un like if you have to re unfreeze it. Uh, but I think it's more like the how many looks does it get to the center of Dizzy Pop. We're never gonna find out. No one is ever gonna play it. Enough. No, I'm hitting. I'm hitting this thing off my Netherwind portal, and it's going face next turn. Believe yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh what is the worst card? Um, I picked Troll Centurion. Um, I find it pretty funny that this card would be better as a one eight than an eight eight because it would actually deal eight damage sometimes. But yeah, as an eight eight rush, it's just literally never. Dealing yeah. eight damage. What, uh, what do you mean? It, yeah, if it, it kills something with eight health, yeah, it deals yeah. eight damage. 
proving rounds. Wait, what? Yeah, you yeah, proving rounds. <laughs> proving rounds for 16, and then you you uh, kill it because yeah, your deck 20, can't deal any other damage. Troll centurions <laughs> slam into each other, deal 16 to face. Glides to put them no. back just in case. Exactly. That's two of your 20 yeah. trolls. Uh, there's my point. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Uh, uh, always a Justin Shep had the lobotomizer, the double costed uh, weapon we got from last expansion that we can't trade. Uh, it's OPOP. Uh, Dardar, finish us out. The worst card. You you have the floor. Yeah. So do you remember when Highlander Rogue existed for a little bit? And it played the four mana death rattle, the four mana like combo death rattle card, and then it had like a two card package of like mechanical dragon and also like mm -hmm. a nine mana nine seven that buffed by four. So imagine like we only get rid of like a few stats, but specifically on the health side where it's more important, and we also make the death rattle be a lot smaller. Okay, at least Inkman is gonna like be played by Mark MCKZ like twice probably. Like who's ever picking this? Like in arena even are they trying this? I don't I don't know. I don't think they are. This, uh, like, it, yeah. this feels like it has like relevance in a hitting face as, as like comparable to like everyone's gangs until they, until they get hit by a nine one in the sense mm -hmm. that it'll never happen. Okay, guys, like every everyone, okay, big man for one thirty four and this for one thirty five. Okay, you can do it. Do it for Justin. Um, do it for always German Justin Shep time. I, I'm hitting this off my call of the grave, buffing my hand like on seventy call of the grave, buff your hand by two. Nah, it's an eleven bad. five, slam it down, oh, no. cross your hand nope. plus four plus four. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well that is it. Worst card of sets right wow. here. We always gotta end with this. Yeah, I didn't realize there were some cards of these. I did not figure out Legionnaire was a card until I had to find its art today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and Troll Centurion, no, I was I looking at it. I was thinking, like, wait, does this actually exist? Like, it never triggers, <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> wait, you can buff your opponent's minions and then deal eight. <laughs> it's like the only good scenario is you hit a flesh giant. Even that, it was free. Like, you're playing at eight mana for eight damage. And killing a flesh giant, that's not good enough right now. It, it honorable kills Ilganath, so. <laughs> and it only deals four damage to your hero when you do that. Are that's you doing nice this with Okay. Now I'm interested. This is definitely <laughs> the most playable out of the three because you get it off Scenarian Ward, so yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, we're going this to see really someone have a Druid. lethal. There's going to be a crazy lethal in Druid because of this card. It's definitely yeah, killing a flesh kill giant. Health, uh, taunt. Uh, I don't know what it is. Oh, it's the the two ten taunt. That's also pretty terrible. <laughs> Fair. That, uh, freezes. On. Fair. So, um. Well. And then they have to hysteria, and it honorable kills all of your other ten health minions, and they die to it. I mean, if they have a board full of one eights, then you can just provoke this eight eight and win. It's true. Um, but that is like one of the other ways to repeatedly deal aid to your opponents here that exists in the set. Yeah, but that is it for us tonight. I want to take a very special moment to thank everyone who was here. I want to thank Neji Boston, Nails, Agent PWE, Dardar, Always Just in Time, and German Shep. Thank you so much for giving us your spicy and not so spicy opinions. Um, I had a lot of fun. I was laughing so hard. There was a moment I could barely ask a question just because of Dardar and Super Chicken, actually, who was in chat. And the two of them just, yeah, I was not ready for it. But um, I want to give a special thanks for Bates for planning everything and just finding everyone to play. Um, it was amazing having you. Thank you, thank you for having me. You're the one who you you did all the the work. I just found some people who wanted to talk about cards. Um, that said, the new set comes out on Tuesday, and the next season starts the other week. So thirteen. Keep yeah yeah um keep your eye out. Reveals team reveals are coming up on Friday and Saturday. Some people here might be in those. Um, you can check out with Saku. He's already posted the events on the channel because he's way more organized than I am. So you can check it there. 
Um, in two weeks, if you would like to play on stream, DM me. We're going to figure it out. But have a good night, everyone. See you later. Ooh, I do got a little little gossip about the team reveals. There will be giving out tavern passes at each of the shows. Oh. So show up if you want a, a shot at a free tavern pass. That's pretty good. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's all I got. Awesome. Well, have a good night, everyone, and we'll see you later.